I think we are good. All right, I'd like to call the Stowe City Council Roads and Safety Committee meeting of September 10th, 2020 uh, to order. Uh, you have before you the approval of minutes from the July 16th, 2020 meeting. Uh, do I have a, uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Need a second. 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 Been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying yes. Yes. Yeah. Those yeah. abstentions. Those minutes stand approved. Uh, we have a couple items uh, um, before us today. I know the one says modified road program list. Nick, really all I was just looking, I think right now that list has already been developed and it's currently out for bid, correct? Yeah, it's the same. Uh, it's the same. There you are. I'm trying to find you on my screen. Um, same bid or list that I provided council several weeks ago the only change that we made was uh we added uh some wheel lanes on 59 and 91 we're using permissive tax for that to the tune of about 150 dollars it's similar if uh anyone remembers i believe it was two years ago we did the same thing on graham road just trying to buy time until we can get our state money i think uh 59 is i think the first one funded and that's 2023 and both of those major thoroughfares are in rough shape so we're just trying to um, buy some time, take care of some water breaks that are out there and, and make it a little more smooth for uh, the people using them. Okay, uh, so we're currently out for bid, right? So when, when does that bid close? Uh, two weeks from today. Two weeks from today. And then once it closes, how long do you anticipate it's going to take before you award? What's the uh, Well, we're going to rush. So as long as it's a company that we've used before and we're comfortable with it, we'll award uh, that day and get the paperwork started. So when do you anticipate a start soon? Well, you know, as soon as all the paperwork gets done, hopefully, you know, there's a rush on it. We've kind of indicated that in our bid documents, we have a cutoff final cutoff date of December 11th. Um, but obviously we're nervous about getting the entire program in, but if we get it with the right contractors, then we should be good to go. Or like I said, we're hoping it's uh, someone we partnered with in the past, which we've used, you know, all of the larger companies around here. So we, uh, we hope that it's something we can hit the ground running on. Okay. Uh, questions for uh, Mr. Wren regarding the road program. Mr. Feldman. Uh, thanks, Chairman McIntyre. Uh, Mr. Wren, just quick so I can understand, and maybe this is a better question for Mr. McIntyre working at ODOT. So the state money, we're due to receive approximately 80%, correct, for 91 and 59, correct? Correct. Um, we do those maintenance things now. Can't that increase to 90%? Uh, not to the best of my knowledge. I don't, I've never heard of that before. We could get some other type of, Jim could get some other type of grant, some safety funding or something like that he's done in the past. So, but that's the standard is 80, 20, unless you get, uh, like I said, some safety money or something put on top, but they, to my knowledge, unless Mr. McIntyre tells me different, I don't, I've never heard of that. Okay. No, I mean, I, I would agree. It's, yeah, typically it's something additional that would change that split. Um, so I guess really this is going to address some of the, uh, I know there's some rutting out there and some of the wheel paths and things like that. So that's going to address this and then some future or past, uh, utility and water line relocations that have taken place and things of that nature. That's what this, this additional is set to really cover. Correct. Um, I don't have the exact area or Mark hasn't, we haven't identified the exact area on 59, but I know that uh, on 91, we're talking about down by Higby, that stretch down there. Uh, that is certainly very rough. So I know that's one of the areas we'll be concentrating on. So, and we'll see how far that, given our bid price, we'll see how far we can get with that $150,000, or 150000 which if you're not familiar, that is reimbursable by uh, Summit County back to the city of Stowe. And what was our final engineer's estimate that we that we had for this again? Well, for the program that I gave you before, it was 1.29, but then we added uh, an additional 150 on top of that, so. And given the current economic climate, are you you guys are anticipating this to come in below 
how, do you guys have an idea where below engineer's estimate you would be coming in at? Or um, well, we're certainly hopeful that it's going to be below. Um, I, 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 can't, I don't want to say off the top, given that it's an open bid, I don't want to say off the top of my head where, where I think it's going to go. Okay. Um, uh, further questions? All right, seeing none, we have another item on the uh, the list today. Um, I won't get into too much of this as uh, Mr. Uh, Mifflin will be joining us at the uh, uh, the seven o'clock hour, but this is to uh, a commendation, you know, recognizing uh, his 33 years in law enforcement. And I think 25 years of that was spent here in the Stowe Police Department. Uh, so I would entertain a motion to assign a number to this and move it on to tonight's city council meeting. So moved. Second. Second. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 No's abstentions. That will appear on tonight's city council meeting. Uh, I just wanted to um, bring up one other thing. I know uh, I'm sure nobody's, <clears throat> everyone's aware of the weather that we had this past weekend. I know I was out uh, and I ran into Mayor Probonic. You know, there was a lot of flooding in a lot of different areas in the city. Uh, I ran into Councilman Fioka and I know I had talked with uh, Mrs. Harrison too. Um, it's no surprise that, you know, there's one area, I guess I was over there. I know one of the residents, you know, for, it seems like 16 years, she was telling me, and then her neighbor says they've been fighting it for 2004. I know this project on green tree is on the list. Um, so I guess I know those projects have gone out to bid and I guess looking at that, um, Mr. Wren or Mr. Jones, if we could get an update on that project specifically on green tree, as to where, you know, when are we anticipating the start of that uh, that culvert work down there taking place? It, I mean, it was pretty bad over the weekend. That's the only reason I brought it up today. Uh, Mr. Jones will address that. Thank you. We are working on the finalization of the plans to be get prepared to go out to bid, and we hope to bid it out as soon as possible. Okay, so there's no delays currently involved. There's no delays, you know, once we get beyond bid. That'll hold uh, well, up the we're still working on utility delays with the sanitary sewer as well as the D Dominion gas main. There's a sanitary sewer that runs parallel with the existing 48 inch corrugated metal and the county after submitting plans to the county, they advised us that they want that uh, whole sanitary main section replaced as well in correlation with our stormwater project. So will that be something that they'll be doing in ahead of ours and is that a force main or gravity? Gravity. Uh, at this what time, kind of gas line is uh, the gas main is on Green Tree running north and south. There's a manhole structure, a large manhole structure that we're setting outside of the roadway that we might have to offset the gas main to bypass the, the manhole structure. I think the, the bigger issue is the sanitary sewer. Right now, we're still not aware whether um, you know, that's going to be part of the city project or the county will uh, be participating and helping out with that. When do you anticipate to have some sort of confirmation from the county regarding the sanitary line? I can't tell you at this time. I don't know. Okay. Uh, all goes well. When are we looking to start? When did that go? When does that go out to bid? As soon as we can. Okay. All right. Um, I guess with that being said to uh, Mr. Ren, I guess how our, I mean, it was our VAC truck, I'm sure was probably working a little bit over the weekend on Monday. It was a, you know, that was an unprecedented amount of rain that we got in such a short amount of time. Yeah, for the most part, our city infrastructure held up very well. Um, we had some on the road flooding over in Pebblehurst that we were at, uh, but that was just a retention pond, just couldn't handle that much rain and it flowed out onto the street. Um, I know that we were uh, um, over in Calls Farm. We had several different uh, homes, 10 to 12 homes, I believe was the final count that were uh, had flooded basements. Uh, myself and the mayor and, and Don Brooker were out there and assessed the situation and Brooker, uh, Mr. Brooker looked into the, the uh, sewer and, and we were only half full at that time. So, uh, that we don't think it's anything related to our city infrastructure. But Wetmore and uh, the project down on Holy Family, they performed exact, exactly as they should. So we know that in our uh, rain in our rain gauge at Fox 10, I know that we got four plus inches. So you don't have a, 
you know, a ton of infrastructure that's built for, for that much rain at once. But for the most part, I was very happy with uh, the way the system held up. Okay. And then we, but we did have the vac truck out in certain areas for certain things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I guess I know we made that purchase this year and I just want to kind of let the, you know, I know I made the statement earlier because I know the value that that piece of equipment provides, you know, city for this type these types of events. In the event we didn't make that purchase with the old equipment, do you think that we would have been able to handle that some of those issues? Because I know that that was on the, that piece of our former piece of equipment was on the outs. Uh, no, I mean, we wouldn't certainly wouldn't be able to handle them to the degree that we did with the new piece of equipment. I mean, it's night and day. So okay. it's like, yeah, it's, it's totally night and day. So it's much more powerful. And obviously, uh, it's new. It's got some additional bells and whistles that our old piece of equipment didn't have. So it's certainly, um, like I said before, it's our Swiss Army knife. So it came in very handy for us. Did police or fire, did any of you guys see increased calls on that Monday event? I can just, as far as the uh, police department, yeah, we, we got called to the, to the flooding and stuff uh, as far as that goes for um, uh, traffic control. Then we also had Route 8 shut down for almost four hours. The uh, fire department had about a dozen calls during the storm. And actually, since uh, it was brought up, I'll mention it now. Captain Griffin, who has been with the department for 30 years, uh, caught me the next morning in the parking lot and wanted to pass on uh, to uh, service and to engineering as well as administration, how much of a significant change that he has seen in the past 30 years uh, when there's a severe storm like this come through. He actually was uh, the captain in charge of our last 500 year storm when we had all the uh, structural uh, damage with the uh, uh, foundation collapses. So he wanted me to pass on that he's very impressed with the work that uh, Nick's uh, crew has done as well as uh, the engineering department. And uh, he can see a significant difference over the years in how the work that this city has done to mitigate stormwater runoff, it's actually is working. Thank you and thanks to, uh, you know, again, thanks to uh, Nick, you and your staff and uh, police and fire, obviously that, like I said, that was an unprecedented amount of rain. And I was talking with residents to kind of put it in perspective because I myself was in that 500 year storm on, in Cauga Falls, you know, and I saw, you know, 500 feet of roadway wash into Mud Brook. So, um, so rain could be our friend or water could be our best friend and our worst enemy. So uh, I thank all of the staff uh, in the city for uh, uh, their timely response to all that. Is there any, uh, is there any other business to come before the roads and safety? Seeing none, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. It's been so moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 No's abstentions. We stand adjourned. Good evening. I'd like to call this September 10th public improvements meeting to order. Uh, I am Chairman Mario Fioca. Other members of the committee and council are, are present. Uh, before you have the approval of the minutes of July 9th, 2020, do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion to approve. Moved and seconded. All those in, figure, in favor signify by saying yes. 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 No abstention. Those minutes stand approved. Uh, the only business item we have um, this evening is in regards to uh, current parks maintenance updates. Um, I'll direct that towards uh, Mr. Rent. If maybe if you could get an update on the work that's being done at Adele Durbin and uh, or any of the uh, parks um, as well as Fox Den affected by the flooding um, on Monday as well, or just provide some updates on that too. Uh, sure. The uh, bridge is complete uh, down at Adele Durbin Park. So council and obviously the residents are invited to go see that. The steps going down have also been filled. Um, we've added some additional steps to get to the bridge. So that's all handled and, and completed. We have one more repair to a different bridge that we have to make, but it's much less extensive. Uh, from there, we are have started work at the senior center. Um, we're able to open the senior center Possible. The latest we heard was September 21st, I believe is the date. Um, so we'll see if that changes with our elevated status level here in Summit County. But we've been, begun to do some work over there. 
uh, to clean it up and uh, make it look uh, more presentable, make it safe for our seniors. And from there, we will go on and uh, we have signage projects to do. And then I believe it's September 18th, our uh, asbestos abatement company um, goes to uh, uh, the restroom facility at Adele Durbin. And once we get a permit for that, we will be uh, removing that structure. And we'll be coming to council. It's actually state bid the uh, kit that we're buying to replace that structure. Um, so to get that on the books, it's going to be a while before it gets here, but uh, we'd like to go ahead and get that ordered and get that uh, building replaced. As far as flooding, nothing uh, damaging in any of the parks. Um, Fox Den saw a tremendous amount of rain. The uh, uh, main parking lot was under probably two, two and a half feet of water at one point when I was out there. So, uh, but shockingly enough, I didn't think there was any way on Monday evening when I was out there that we were going to be able to play, have play on Tuesday, but everything across the city uh, really drained very well. And uh, we did have play on Tuesday and uh, the crews were out cleaning up just debris that had washed around in the parks and they had done the same uh, in streets and and that on uh, Monday, the guys are in on Monday and then continue that on Tuesday, but not a ton of cleanup either uh, in the streets or in the parks. So we continue to to work our way through our list, and um, obviously council will be uh, heavily involved in the next next part when we're coming to uh, get permission to go to bid on different things and to purchase different items. Happy to answer any other questions. Any questions from the committee? How is, yes, uh, I have a oh, go ahead, uh, Dennis. Uh, uh, Nick, uh, on the bridge, uh, it was built uh, to a different specification and saved us a lot of money, correct? Correct. Was and uh, was, was that one individual uh, that came up with that idea or was that uh, a group of individuals? Mark Anderson is the one, one of my deputy directors is the one that found the uh, US forestry design that was utilized. And then our parks maintenance crew as a group effort, and I believe our building maintenance crew may have been involved a little bit as well. Uh, they're the ones that constructed the bridge. Well, they saved the city a lot of money. Uh, they all deserve an attaboy. And uh, if this was a, uh, a, a private business instead of a, the city, uh, they could find a bonus in their, their paychecks. We could, I'd give them all a big, to do that. I gave them all a big pat on the back. That's our that's our bonus around here. So okay, thank you. Hey, um, Mr. Brent, how's uh how's play been over at Foxton um, the past well, past month? Uh, tremendous, off the charts. We've set records all three months: uh, June, July, and August is our first ever June over two hundred thousand. Our first ever August over two hundred thousand. Uh, we're already ahead of last year's uh, year to date amount through the end of August. And we're about $50,000 shy of a million for the year, which is, if you told me that in March and April, I would have said there's no way. So we, uh, we have a absolutely packed weekend. Uh, I'm not sure how many tea times, if any, we have left. Uh, so we've been extremely busy. The course is still in great shape and uh, We'll be air fine here, and I think it's two weeks we start to air fine. Uh, but yeah, you can't. I mean, we we unfortunately at times we're turning people away because we're either out of carts or out of tea times. But right now, it's a good problem to have. Are there uh, plans to since we were delayed, you know, at the beginning of the year, it delays to keep the course open longer this year, weather permitting? We're open when the weather permits. That is our new uh, new policy moving forward. Um, if it's a day in December that we've closed because of snow and we're going to get one decent day, we're not going to open for that. But if we can get a stretch of three, four, five days and we could steal some money in December, January, February, we will definitely do that. So we are, we used to close on or about December 15th, but we've adjusted that philosophy. And now as long as we're not going to damage the course and uh, we're going to cover our costs for that day and it's, worth it to, to be more than one or two days, then we will be open. Thank you. Any other questions from the committee? Any questions from council as a whole? Mr. McIntyre. 
Uh, thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to say, you know, uh, I was down at the uh, bridge a couple weeks ago, you know, and it was it was looking good. Then I think <clears throat> uh, the main part, with, with the exception of the additional steps, was put in in the railing. But I've since been down there and seen the completed products so, product. So uh, I would too would like to extend uh, uh, my gratitude to the services, uh, the service uh, staff that was down there. Uh, that came up with that alternative design. I think, Nick, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the original design was somewhere around twenty-five, thirty-five thousand dollars for the one that. Thirty-five thousand. Thirty-five thousand. So I mean, the savings that that provided. So I, I, I too say that you know it, it came out good. Uh, you know, connected to you know that void down there, and I think it lo really looks good. And I think it'll only be fitting uh, with that type of lumber once it starts to do its process of aging, and then really fit in with the uh, surrounding area. So I too would like to extend my uh, gratitude to uh, your your staff for uh, proposing that alternative idea and constructing and saving the uh, the city money. So thank you. Thank you. I'll pass that along. Mr. Fioka, Mr. Heiler has his hand raised. Mr. Heiler. Thank you. Uh, Nick, I, I, I too want to um, want to thank you for the bridge on one hand, and I'm going to take your name in vain and the others because I'm using that area to train and uh, going going from down low up the stairs and all the way up the stairs as far as training, uh, that hurts. And so yeah. I was out there today and it, it, uh, it's very well done. It's a very sturdy bridge and thank you very much for it. Thank you. Any further questions? Seeing none, that concludes our business items for this evening. Uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying yes. 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 No substantions. We are adjourned. I will turn it over to Mr. McIntyre. Uh, thank you. I'd like to call the uh, Stowe City Council Finance Committee meeting to order for September 10th, 2020. Uh, we have no minutes before us to approve. Uh, I'll turn it over to Mr. Costello uh, to kind of give us an update on, uh, uh, did, I know we had some email issues, but did everyone got a copy of the most recent uh, budget financials? Correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Costello, but I think they're as of uh, September 1, correct? That is correct. Everyone got a copy of those. Everyone got a chance to review this. Uh, Mr. Costello, if you want to kind of give us an update on budget and financial reports. Well, in, in general, the... Uh, the budget we've pretty much stayed steady. Uh, our tax collections are down about uh, 400,000 at the end of August. We have since dropped now down to 300,000. Um, our payroll and gross profit money has been coming in slightly ahead of 2019. And we're still sort of holding our own. Uh, you want, I can go through the details on the uh, bill listing if you want, or I can wait for the council meeting for that. Your choice. Um, anyone, does anyone have any uh, questions or anything regarding the bill listing that we could discuss here at the finance committee meeting? I see none. Um, I just, uh, as far as the uh, the COVID money, obviously that we approved legislation for not too long ago, has the city spent any of that on anything yet? Um, actually, as of today, we have submitted our request for the payroll support program with Summit County in the amount of nine hundred and ninety-two thousand five hundred and twenty-four dollars and forty-one cents. We're waiting for them to approve that and then return the funds to us. The uh, other money, which is House Bill 481 from federal government, we've received uh, two payments. That amounts to uh, 1.42 mil. And we're collecting data on that right now. We do have um, admin leave and COVID expenses that we are going to apply to that and any of the uh, other payroll support that we could not cover from Summit County, we're going to add to that. So pretty much most of that money will disappear here before the deadline, which is uh, depending on which edict you're looking at, it's either October 15th or November 20th. Um, there is another pot of money that uh, House Bill 357 that has passed the uh, 
state Senate, but still has to go to the House, which would then give to the city another 1.2 million. And once we get definition on that, we'll be more than happy to spend it. All right. I know early on, uh, you know, early on in this thing, before obviously any of these things were, you know, before things were pass passed in uh, the state or, in, you know, at, in Washington regarding this, and there were some things that, you know, we were keeping track of, for example, uh, the golf carts, you know, that we had to get to, to meet those uh, social distancing guidelines that we were going to consider for reimbursement. Are some of those things that we talked about submitting for reimbursement, have those items been submitted mm -hmm. uh, under any of this? No, that, that's all part of the House Bill 481. That's the next step. Okay. Mr. McIntyre, if I could, uh, yeah. I just got an update from my purchasing department today, and we've spent $145,000 and change on COVID-related items for the city. And those and are the things. Those are the things that will eventually, whatever, you know, the missile. Those items will submit for reimbursal for once under what Mr. Costello. That'd be under House Bill 481 that we would submit for reimbursement under those. That's correct. correct. And okay. You also, you also will have a later on in your agenda here. You have another COVID-related expense, so we continue to spend money on COVID-related um, items, but and continue to track those as well. Uh, further questions uh, regarding budget uh, and finance reports. Mr. Feldman. Thank you, Chairman McIntyre. So, Mr. Costello, just so I'm clear, when I'm communicating with residents, we're going to end up receiving $3.59 million in whatever we're calling CARES Act money, whatever house bill, right? Is that correct? Possibly. It, it depends if they, uh, the last House Bill 357 comes through which is 1.2, correct? Correct. So as of now, we're 2.39 million, correct? Give or take, yes. And we're told how to spend that money, but we can put it and then move other dollars out of the general fund into where we have deficits, correct? No. What we can do is we can spend how we have spent the money we can then take that money, transfer it into the general fund for how we've already spent the money right. and getting the money back. So, but we can't, you know, spend it on whatever we want. We've got to just spend it on the COVID expenses. Yeah, I, I, didn't, like I didn't say that. I didn't say that correctly. So, personnel or staffing can be pushed as long as it fits a COVID requirement. Then we can transfer that out of what the budget states and take the general fund money and put it where needed, correct? Correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Further questions? Mrs. Harrison. Thank you, Mr. McIntyre. Mr. Costello, do we have an idea of what type of funds we have that are gonna have shortfalls that we're gonna need to make adjustments to? At this point, I think it's a little early. Mr. Earl, do you wanna comment on that? Yeah, I would say it's a little early. We we try to make the adjustments in uh, November and uh, December, and we'll have a report to council on what those would have to be. But we've made we've tried to make sure through the whole year that we have when we budget conservatively, it takes into account that we may have shortfalls in revenue, even though none of them are on the horizon at the time. So we make sure our budget remains balance to the extent we can and we've done that this year too so but there will be some adjustments yes okay do we have any idea of what accounts those will be in um yes the uh, the lodging fund and this and the street construction will have enough of a balance to cover so there probably won't need to be an adjustment there and then the general fund is where all the payroll is going to be adjusted but those are adjustments down so there won't have to be an adjustment to the appropriation because we're not exceeding it, we're going under it, which is what you have to do under the law, stay under the ad or under the appropriation. So they won't, we'll, while we'll inform council that's what we're doing, there won't need to be a council action on the ones where there's where you're simply falling underneath the appropriation. Thank you, Mr. Earl and Mr. Costello. 
Um, one quick question I'll have too, I guess, looking at this, you know, all this money that, you know, we have, is any of this money that we're receiving and that we're utilizing, is it going to reduce? I know last meeting we talked about the potential of dipping into the rainy day fund. Is any of this money going to reduce or minimize uh, how much, if any, that we would have to take from the rainy day fund, uh, given this, uh, you know, the economic crisis we find ourselves in from this pandemic? Well, we won't be dipping into the rainy day fund, period. The rainy day fund is limited by the state at $1 million. What we would be dipping into would be what we call the carryover money. So we would have just a reduction in the carryover. We would expect with this one-time influx of money, and I got to reemphasize that, this is a one-time influx of money. It's not going to be an ongoing influx of money unless the federal government decides to continue on with it, which I doubt seriously that'll happen. But our carryover may grow a little bit because of this influx of money. Okay, so I just want to clear up the confusion because I was under the impression last meeting that we talked about that there was potential of having to utilize rainy day fund money. So we're not anticipating having to use any rainy day fund money to you, balance. You, call, you called it the rainy day fund money, but it is a, the rainy day fund money is $1 million and that's limited by the state. That's all you can have in your rainy day fund. Anything over $1 million that you carry over into the next fiscal year is just that, a carryover balance. Okay, thank you. And one thing, we, we did not have clarification at our last meeting. We keep getting more clarification of what we're allowed to do with the funds and we're being extremely careful to adhere to any guidelines. Well, they're called guidelines, but they're mandatory. So we've been very careful there. And it's been a, every time we get it clarified, then it seems to change the next week. So based on what we know now, we won't be using any, I, I think Jeremy, when he, when he was, Jim, when he was talking about the rainy day fund, he meant the overall, you meant the combined yes, balance the, and the, and the, and the rainy day fund, which but we don't, we don't anticipate the way things stand right now, unless they change, we will not be dipping into the rainy day fund. But one thing we have to keep in mind, as Jim has said, these are one-time funds. What has happened is with the funding that we've gotten, the grant assistance, we've simply pushed the problem from 2020 to 2021. So we're back to our normal shortfall of revenues, whatever that turns out to be for 2021, that we won't have in 20 overall because of the uh, grant assistance. So we would have, without any grant money through CARES Act, we would have clearly dipped into the, had to utilize rainy day and carryover reserve funds. Okay. But it, when there was no question we would have. Okay. Because our actual dollar, our monetary loss will be in the millions for the year. But and we have to be very careful how we talk about these, these uh, CARES Act funds because they, interpretation you've got you've got a number of agencies that are interpreting how you're allowed to spend it and they don't all agree you've got the federal treasury you've got the state auditor you've got the office of budget management at the state and i think there's one other but i can't think of who that is so there, there's at least three agencies that are giving guidelines on how and two of them refer to the same source, but interpret it differently. Say, so here's what this source says you can spend it on, but they each interpret it differently. So it's, it's been, that's why we've been so so careful about, about how we're uh, proceeding and, and trying to advise council money's available or is not available. But it appears now that we're, we have the guidelines we need, but got four months to go in the, three and a half months to go in the year. So that may change. And to complicate the problem even more is we can use our best judgment, follow the best guidelines that they have given us, but they can come out and do an inspection and say, they don't like the way you spent it. And then they're gonna say, give it back. Okay. The fourth agency I was trying to think of was Summit County. They're also, and they've been extremely helpful. Summit County has been extremely helpful in trying to zero in on what pre precisely 
constitutes compliance with the federal regulations and spending the money on COVID related expenses. And we think we've got a good handle on that. So as a state. All right, thank you. Um, all right, if there's no further questions on the budget financial reports, thank you, uh, Mr. Earl and Mr. Costello. Uh, we have a number of items here today. Um, I don't know. Excuse I, me, Mr. McIntyre. Yes, Mr. Costello. Um, could we take it a little out of order? Uh, in the waiting room is Chris Snyder, who is our tax administrator or tax manager per se. Yes. And, uh, could we bring her in and take the uh, motion item J first so that uh, she could then go home and continue to take care of her mother? She came yes, back absolutely. Uh, <laughs> yes, Mrs. Harrison, if you want to go ahead and let... Uh, Mrs. Snyder in and we'll go ahead and take things out of order and uh, we'll move to item J first. I have, I have let her in and it looks like she's joined us. All right, uh, Mr. Mr. Costello, do you, is Mrs. Snyder gonna handle the introduction and talk about this or do you wanna talk about it first and kind of turn it over to her? I'll, I'll talk about it first. You all got a copy of the uh, letter? Yes. Stating that uh, we have another individual that's been with the city a long t term and she's retiring. And I'm asking for your permission to go out and uh, seek a replacement individual. Uh, I've given you all the information about the uh, job grade position and salary range. And I just asked Chris to come on board to uh, answer any questions that you might have about the position. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Costello. Yes, I mean, uh... Uh, Mrs. Snyder, thanks for being here today to answer questions. If you could just kind of give us a, uh, a bird's eye view of what this position does uh, for the city, kind of identifying, you know, I would assume a tax auditor is busy during tax time, but it seems like reading through the position, uh, there's never uh, there's never a dull moment, uh, I would assume, in that in that regards for tax time. So uh, I'll turn it over to you if you just give us a little information about the, uh, that position and the person that's filling it now. Okay, thank you. Um, we've had... Uh... Uh, our, our current employee is, is retiring. She's been here, I think, 18 to 20 years. Um, the tax auditor position is very vital. Is um, we, As you probably know, we enter thousands of tax returns each year. Um, somewhere between 16 and 18,000 tax returns come through our office via the mail or via being um, e-filed. Uh, the tax auditor uh, has very many duties that would include entering tax forms, opening mail, processing payments, uh, auditing those tax forms, uh, requesting additional information for incomplete tax forms. Um, it's, it's a very busy department. There are very few days where there's, um, it's, it's a slow day. And this year especially has been trying with all the various due dates changes and, and as such. Um, we get a lot of traffic that come into that comes into our office for our assistance. Uh, she would uh, go to our counter and help uh, taxpayers who might need help uh, filing their return, um, uh, taking payments. You know that that they come in. We get uh, we have a lot of traffic that comes into our office uh, to do that. Uh, she takes care of uh, many spreadsheets of keeping up to date with uh, you know how things are going. Um, it's a very busy position. And I hope that's, you know, it's in a nutshell, that's what it is. So you say she, she we're losing, she was, has she been in this department for the 18 years that she's been with the city? I think 18, about 18 years. I think she hired in and maybe worked in the water department for just a bit, um, but she's been here uh, for several years and she is, you know, she is retiring. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, is there any questions for, uh... Mrs. Snyder regarding this position. Mr. Feldman. Excuse me, Chairman McIntyre. For Mr. Costello, Mrs. Snyder, I, no questions. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Great job. Let me tell you, I've been Thank in your office a couple of times. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Costello? I'm, I'm, I'm waiting. Your memo, are we, are we posting internally and externally? Because Paragraph yes. two confused me with paragraph three. Uh, yes, just like we did for the uh, 
previous position will go out in both inside and outside, see what's available. Okay. Thank you. Are there any, um, <clears throat> under the job, is there any educational requirements for a position like this? Um, I don't believe we, yeah, I don't think we have a college type uh, uh, requirement, but we are uh, looking for someone that may have some tax experience. It's not mandatory, but it would be very helpful if they did have that experience. Um, tax uh, computing is, you know, it, it takes a special kind of person that is good with numbers and um, can readily learn about the Ohio Revised Code. Um, there's a lot of things that um, are important in this position. College, you know, if they have college, of course, that is very helpful. But if not, you know, the right person will will know them when we when we interview and look at resumes and and things like that. You guys look for uh, as far so. If with that being said, too, is there is there a minimum or like years of experience that these types of positions that you're you typically look for? Well, this is the first uh, person I've ever hired in the tax office. So, um, uh, with with the resumes we have been uh, receiving through our water billing and through our payroll, I, I was involved in the hiring of both those positions, and we got a wonderful group of resumes. Um, so, I'm hopeful that we're going to see that same. Uh, high level of, of uh, employer employees that are looking, you know, to come into our office here. Okay. Well, I thank you. Is there any, uh, Mrs. Harrison? I just had a question about, I know this is a tax auditor two position. Do we have a tax auditor one or do we have other tax auditors working in the department or is this a one um, person kind of role? The tax department is made up. Um, I'm the tax administrator. I have a income tax supervisor and I have a income tax auditor too. That is the that is the crux of our department. We do have um, some part time. We we share a part time position with a, a part time gal from purchasing, who helps us uh, do our scanning, and uh, we have another um, regular part time position that um, works on the average of twenty hours a week. And she enters uh, is very helpful with our keeping our database updated, um, doing what we call annual reconciliations where all the employers that are in STOW are re required to send an annual reconciliation each year. And she enters all the W-2s that come with that. And then I do use a, another part-time person for scanning as well. We, we took on the scanning uh, program a couple years ago. And um, so we're scanning all our documents. And so it's been a wonderful help to us as we are now able to uh, use our tax database and uh, just with a click of a button, look at the tax return in its paper form as it came in. So um, really the tax auditor and the tax supervisor and myself are the ones that um, really keep all the things you know, coming in, uh, making all the deposits and entering all the tax returns, et cetera. Thank you, Ms. Snyder, I appreciate you. Yeah. You're giving welcome. an insight into how that department runs. Thank you. All right. Uh, any further questions? Mr. Fioka. Just had one uh, question for Ms. Schneider. Is uh, is it multiple rounds of interviews? I just did just curiosity in terms of the turnaround time for hiring for this position to have somebody in place. Is it, uh, or how does that normally work? Just for my own curiosity. Um, we're hoping that um, you know we're we're going to have a deadline for when the they're due, of course, and then we we kind of use a little bit of a committee method. We go through all the resumes and we rank them, and we you know this is good, this is not you know, and then we pick usually our top ten, and uh, decide which ones we want to interview, and possibly there would be a second inter interview if necessary. Um, we've been very like I said earlier, the um, the number of, of resumes that we've received for the past uh, finance positions that have been open, we have gotten a wonderful, wonderful group of resumes. So I'm hopeful that we're going to likely see that as well. Thank you very much, Mr. Fioka. If I could jump into every position, every position that we interview for is somewhat different. 
some have skills tests, some have some of the maintenance position to have actual hands-on tests. So it's really a position by position. And then obviously the appointed authority in this case, Mr. Costello, it's however they want to um, frame that up. Right. Thank you. All right, any further questions? All right, seeing none, I, uh, Ms. Snyder, thank you for your time and enjoy the rest of your evening. And okay. uh, thanks, thanks a lot. Please. Thank you, you guys. Have a great night. You too. Bye. All right, uh, no further questions. Uh, I will move to hire a tax auditor to position. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Nose abstentions, you can put out the posting, Mr. Costello. That's got to go through council this evening as a motion, but thank you very much. Is it just, I thought it was, it's not a motion of uh, just the finance committee? No, uh, our agenda has to go to council. Has, has to go to council. Yeah, it's under no, new go to council. Oh, it's okay. just a, a motion under uh, new So business. that will uh, come up under new business tonight. All right. Um, thank you. Thank you. Back to uh, the top of the order here. Uh, I believe the first two items are for the law department. I can speak on those, Mr. McIntyre. Um, first one, we're doing the public defenders. Uh, yes, the public okay. defenders commission. Thank you. Uh, the law department's requesting that legislation be considered to authorize the mayor to enter into an agreement with the Summit County Public Defenders Commission for indigent defense services. This is a yearly contract that we enter into with Summit County Public Defenders. They're the sole source provider of indigent defense services and they represent any indigent defendants that appear before the Stowe Municipal Court. None of the uh, terms of the agreement from the prior years have changed this year. The city will still be billed $170 per case opened during the year. And it looks like we already have some cases open during this year, um, but we only pay as we go. So uh, if there are no indigent defendants, we don't have to pay. Um, and I would request that this legislation be considered under the emergency measures so that any indigent defendants who need immediate representation can be represented fairly in court. Hey, um, so this, for this, uh, is there, I, looking through the, the request letter, is there a, um, is this an annual thing? So is it based off of an annual year or a fiscal year that you guys typically do this? I, I believe this is the first time I've seen it. So I believe it's an annual thing and we just didn't get the request for the legislation until late this year, probably due to COVID I'm guessing. Okay, and I guess for the, uh, for the listening public, can you just kind of elaborate on what it means to be uh, an indigent defendant? Sure, when someone is hailed into court for whatever reason, um, if they are not able to afford counsel, then one will be provided to them by the court. Um, and that appointment, that appointed attorney does get paid for their services through this program. Okay, thank you. Uh, questions for the law department? Seeing none, I will entertain a motion to assign a number to this and move it on to tonight's city council meeting. I moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 No. Yes. Questions. That will appear on tonight's city council meeting. Uh, the next item up is uh, for Summit County for Animal Control Services. So this is legislation that um, we're asking to be considered for a contract that gets renewed every five years with Summit County Animal Control Services. And they um, they house any animals that become seized by the city. Usually it's during an arrest, we would see an animal um, be, be abandoned and become seized. So this is a, again, similar contract terms to the prior years. Um, it's just a renewal of an existing contract, which I included for you all in the packet. Um, and I did speak with Chief Film to make sure that the police department is still in need of using these type of services. And he confirmed that they would like to renew this contract with Summit County. And again, asking for this to be passed as an emergency measure so that the animal seized during uh, criminal court cases can have safe housing. 
Okay, uh, questions regarding this piece of uh, legislation. All right, seeing none, I will entertain a motion to assign a number to this and move it on to tonight's city council meeting. A moved. Second. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 No abstentions that will appear on tonight's city council meeting. Uh, the next two items are for moral claims. Mr. Renner, you hand, who's handling the? Uh, Mrs. Channel will handle the first one and I'll handle the second one. Okay, so uh, see Ms. Ms. Channels, if uh, you want to talk about the MRT property moral claim. Or let me pull that one up. I can go um, to Jamie or Kelly. That's right. okay. I got it. In this instance, um, the Board of Control received a moral claim to review for damage that was done to a storage unit. Um, this damage occurred when the police department was um, in the middle of a life-threatening situation. They, they came to the scene and determined that entry was needed into a storage unit and began, um, began obtaining entry into the unit by using a sledgehammer because it was locked. And eventually the owner of the storage facility came out and unlocked the unit and, and the, the police officers were able to gain access. Um, so the moral claim is based on the damage that was sustained to the storage unit during that pursuit. <clears throat> um, the Board of Control reviewed the, the claim and the law department advised them that we we reviewed a copy of the contract between the storage unit owner who is now deceased and the storage unit company mrt properties and we found that mrt properties pursuant to their contract with the storage unit tenant has a couple of avenues by which they can be reimbursed for this damage they can either um, sell the contents of the storage unit, determine the storage unit abandoned, sell the contents of the storage unit and recoup their losses by the sale of those items. Or the contract also allows um, if a party becomes deceased to pursue any losses against their heirs or assigns. So because this contract um, exists and then we, uh, we do not believe the board of control voted that the city is not liable and would not be paying this moral claim. Oh, thank you, Ms. Channels. I guess my question, when you say the owner of the uh, storage unit came out to unlock it, uh, is this storage facility, is it manned by, does it have somebody that's manning that location during like a normal business hours? I wouldn't know that. Okay. Can, I mean, do we know, I, I, I guess that's just my question is, were they on site and came out and, or did they come out afterwards? I see um, Mayor Probotic. Yeah, Jeremy, uh, uh, Chief Film, can you elaborate whatever you can elaborate of why this was done that way? At the uh, time that we had the, the information that we had, uh, we were not aware that the, uh, the owner was on, on site. Um, we received a welfare check for a suicidal subject um, once the officers uh, arrived on scene, they obtained information that the subject was most likely in the lock unit, and they, they proceeded to uh, attempt to, uh, uh, to destroy the lock to get into the unit to, to uh, try to you know, pr provide uh, life-saving me measures. They didn't. Uh, it, it would have been um, uh, it wouldn't have been proactive to, to to go and try to find somebody on on site or call the owner of the facility and wait for them to arrive. With the information that we had. Okay. Now this the storage facility site is it is it gated? Was it gate is it a gated storage facility where you have to have access to even get into the overall facility? No, no sir. It's just okay. a storage unit. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any questions regarding this? Seeing none, I will entertain a motion to assign a number to this and move it on to tonight's city council meeting. So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 No abstentions that will appear on tonight's city council meeting. Mr. Wren, I believe you're going to handle the next one. Yes. Uh, this was an incident where uh, a branch from a tree lawn tree uh, 
was allegedly sticking out into the roadway. Um, Mr. Fink's truck hit the uh, branch, causing damage to the mirror. I believe uh, the amount was around $1,700. Uh, the service department had no prior knowledge of this. Um, as uh, I think council is aware at this point, we need to be uh, notified of a hazard and we need to be given an opportunity to fix that hazard uh, prior to us becoming liable. Uh, this is no different than a pothole. If we get a, a, a call, we have to go out and fix it, but we need to be given time to fix it. Um, even in Mr. Fink's letter, he states that the day that he called, which was our first call on it, uh, the service department went out and fixed the uh, alleged hazard. So by the time we got out there, the limb was uh, behind the curb, presumably because of the contact it made with Mr. Fink's truck though. So that is why the Board of Control denied this because we had no prior knowledge and therefore we are not liable. Questions? Yeah. Mr. Feldman. Mr. Wren, just reading, uh, thank you, Chairman McIntyre. Mr. Wren, just reading the his letter. So uh, I'm confused on timeline. He damaged his vehicle and then he went to the city or it looks, it reads as if he went to the city first. No, 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 the accident happened first and then he contacted the city. Thank you. So I, I guess so I can be more clear too, because I see that it happened on Progress Park and obviously that is, you know, the main portion of Progress Park is an uncurbed roadway with ditch line and everything. So his vehicle wasn't parked on the road. Was he, was he operating the vehicle at the time that he hit the branch, I guess? Yeah, yeah to the best of my knowledge, he was. Okay. Okay, further questions? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to assign a number to this and move it on to tonight's city council meeting. So moved. moved. Second. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying yes. Yes. Those abstentions that will appear on tonight's city council meeting. I think next up is for the engineering department. I will, um, I will not, I will be abstaining on this piece of legislation. Uh, this is a continuing ongoing from an initial uh, piece of legislation for the sidewalk project. So um, I will turn it over to Mrs. Harrison to uh, take any questions regarding this piece of legislation. Mr. McIntyre, are we going out of order? Because I believe item E is Huntington Bank. Right. Probably for Mr. Costello. Oh, I apologize. I overlooked that. I did overlook these two. I apologize. Yeah, so we have Huntington, Mr. Costello. Actually, I'm going to let Mr. Earl take the next two. All right, Mr. Earl. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is to renew our uh, depository agreement with Huntington Bank every three years. Renew under state law that's three years at a time. They are our main uh, depository for all our accounts, our checking accounts. And uh, we have a good relationship with them. They do a good job in our uh, uh, very uh, excellent institution for us to have our, our deposits in for the daily operation of the city. And we uh, request a uh, renewal for the next three years for Huntington to be our main depository. All right, thank you. Questions for Mr. Earl regarding this. Seeing none, I will entertain a motion to assign a number to this and move it on to tonight's city council meeting. So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Those extensions that will appear on tonight's city council meeting. Mr. Earl. Uh, our flu shots, we have uh, for years, I had a flu shot program in-house where the employees uh, come to city hall and uh, receive their flu shots. This year it's going to be, they'll be on their own getting their shots, but we still want to reimburse employees for the shots to uh, encourage them to, as an incentive, to uh, get them so that uh, to protect the city uh, as best we can from that particular health hazard and flu shots. But it's it's a longstanding program and it's not, not that costly, but it's effective uh, for those who use it. So yeah, that's, why it's, it's, that's why it's stated as a reimbursement, although it might've been stated that way before because if you couldn't get to city hall, we also did reimburse if you had to get the shot elsewhere. But uh, this this year is going to be all total reimbursement basis. All right, thank you, Mr. O. Questions? 
Seeing none, I will entertain a motion to assign a number to this and move it on to tonight's city council meeting. So moved. Need a second? Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 No's abstentions that will appear on tonight's city council meeting. Uh, Mrs. Harrison. Yes, we'll move on to item G. Um, this is relates to the Darrow Road sidewalk project. I believe this is for you, Mr. Jones. Thank you, Mrs. Harrison. This is the final phase in the right-of-way acquisition process. The city needs this ordinance to appropriate the final parcels. Please pass this ordinance by an emergency for the immediate preservation of the public health and safety for the reasons that the sidewalk installation provides a safe location to walk for pedestrians. The goal for this, pro this project is to be out to bid November, December 2020. Thank you for your consideration. Be happy to any answer any questions. Any questions for Mr. Jones? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to move this on tonight's city council meeting. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Feldman. Yep, very quickly, uh, thank you, Ms. Harrison. Uh, Mr. Jones, I was looking at some plans this week of a resident and sidewalk. What determines the, the depth of the sidewalk onto the real property of a resident? Uh, well, we try to stay within the city right away the best we can uh, for areas that are too close where the city sidewalks can be too close to the curb. Uh, we have to, that's where we have to acquire some property to keep that sidewalk off of the, uh, you know, the back of the curb on Darrow Road. So there's a few factors. I don't know if that answers your question, but we try to stay within the city right away the best we can. But if we cannot, that's why we, when we have to, uh, you know, ask for right-of-way acquisition. And there's a balance there between jumping off the right-of-way onto real property of the homeowner, correct? Yeah, we try to stay with, you know, the best alignment as we can. So if, you know, our, we don't want to jog in and out, um, you know, we're working through a lot, a lot of existing drive approaches. So trying to make those grades work with the required ADA, you know, requirements. You got it. Thank you, Ms. Sarson. No problem, Mr. Feldman. I would entertain a motion to move this on to tonight's city council meeting. Ms. Channels has her hand up. Oh, I'm sorry, Kelly. I didn't see you down there. Ms. That's Channels. Okay. I just want to make a comment so that council knows um, all of the all of the parcels proposed to be appropriated tonight. Uh, have not signed an agreement with the city. So there were many other parcels involved in this project. Everyone else has signed off on uh, an agreement with the project. These are just a, the few left over who we've, we've not heard from. Just wanted to make sure that was clear. Thank you, Mrs. Channel. And I think Mr. McCleary explained that a couple meetings ago that they were trying to wrap up the final agreements and that if not, this would be coming forward. So I appreciate you clarifying that with Mr. McCleary out. Um, so I would entertain a motion to move this on to tonight's city council meeting. So move. Second. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Noes. Abstentions. Abstain. Uh, Mr. McIntyre abstains on that item and I will turn it back over to you. Thank you, Mrs. Harrison. Uh, I think our next item is for Chief Film. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, we're seeking legislation for the authorization for an expenditure of up to $22,698.90 for the ErgoFlex system incorporated to repair uh, three of our main dispatch workstations. Um, just a little history on these um, workstations. Um, if I can get it pull up here so I can see it. Um, our, a new dispatch council position costs between $16,000 and $18,000 uh, to be delivered and installed. That's each council. Our current councils are 12 years old. Um, these are an industry standard. They're very heavy duty. And it, what we're replacing is the base that that, cause, that allows the unit to go up and down. And, and um, so just so everybody understands, these are very heavy duty units because they have a lot of computers and equipment and monitors on them. Um, two of the positions uh, are failing to move uh, and actually crashed. Um, one of the positions is stuck in the lowest position, which cannot be used. Um, we do have six uh, councils in our dispatch center. However, two are, are designated as backup. The, so these three councils that need repaired 
our three out of our four primary uh, councils that are used every day. Um, and with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Questions for Chief Film. Seeing none, I will entertain a motion to assign a number to this and move it on to tonight's city council meeting. Chairman McIntyre, just real quick, briefly. Mr. Feldman. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, Chief Film, real quick. Depending on November election with dispatch, we these are needed as of right now, correct? We couldn't yeah. get through depending on how the vote goes on November? Yes, even if, if the vote would go forward in November and we, we would continue moving to the regional dispatch center, we're looking at a two year minimum of 18 months to two years prior to that. Uh, these, these councils do come with a five year warranty. I will tell you that uh, uh, Mr. Wren's people have worked on these for the past couple of years and, and we've done our best to get them you know, as far as we have. However, they're at a point now that they, we cannot repair them. Uh, a large, not a large, but a portion of this expense is, um, is for the, the maintenance person to be flown here um, and, to, and to, uh, to, to be able to do this work. So I know it's expensive. I had sh sticker shock also when I saw it, but um, uh, these do need repaired um, so our, our dispatch personnel can uh, do their jobs properly. Yeah, thanks, Chief. I apologize. I wasn't thinking timeline. I was just looking at the number and thinking out loud. So thank you. Further questions? All right, seeing none, uh, I will entertain a motion to assign a number to this and move it on to tonight's city council meeting. So moved. Thank second. you. And moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 No's abstentions that will appear on tonight's city council meeting. Chief Stone, I believe you're next. Thank you, Mr. McIntyre. The uh, fire department is requesting approval for $9,825 for to Howell Rescue Systems for the purchase of a, an electric uh, push-pull ram system that we use for our extrication. In recent years, we've been getting rid of our gasoline-powered hydraulic tools that we use for extrication and move into the more modern uh, more efficient uh, battery powered units. They still have the hydraulics built in. I guess I shouldn't get into all that. But anyway, they're battery powered and it's a lot quicker to grab them off the truck and just go. So we've been making that move towards replacing these units. We've also discovered that with some of our success with AFG grants that we are able to uh, make a purchase and apply to uh, get some of the leftover, the residual funds from AFG to help uh, offset these costs. and. Our intention is to make this purchase and then apply for the 2018 residual funds that we have uh, to apply towards the purchase of this. Um, whenever we're purchasing the equipment, the reason we're before you today, we're trying to keep within the same family of rescue equipment so we don't have uh, multiple types of batteries and multiple types of chargers. And uh, so that's why we're here now looking to make this purchase uh, before the, the uh, equipment starts changing. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Questions for Chief Stone. Seeing none, I will entertain a motion to assign a number to this and move it on to tonight's city council meeting. So moved. Second. Then moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Snows abstentions that will appear on tonight's city council meeting. Uh, we have already done item J. We are on to item K. Um, that is Chief Film. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, if you remember uh, at the last, I believe it was the last council meeting, um, I came, we came and proposed a, uh, a, uh, to enter into a grant um, uh, to receive 75% uh, reimbursement for our, our bulletproof vest uh, with, uh, through the state of Ohio Attorney General's office and uh, we were awarded that grant. Uh, we're now uh, are asking for the legislation for the expenditure of $16,566, uh, which 75% of that will be reimbursed for the, uh, the bulletproof vest for the, for the, for the officers, which uh, brings our, our, um, our, our monies owed, our, our expenditure to about four, just over $4,000 for, the, for this purchase. And then with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Questions for Chief Film. Seeing none, uh, is this this looks like to be just a motion of the finance committee? Yes. Okay. All right. I move to uh, I will move to approve uh, the uh, the body uh, for the body armor up to sixteen thousand five hundred sixty six to draw a check and draw a check. Second. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor, sig signify by saying yes. 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 No's abstentions. That is approved. 
Mr. Wren, you are the last item. Yes, Mr. McIntyre, I have to apologize. I just noticed at the beginning of the meeting, I didn't send you the list of who everybody's, uh, who to call on for everything. So I apologize. Well, I, I got it. That's why I kind of went out of order. I thank you for, I, okay. I thank you for that. Um, all right, this is to uh, buy seven desktop computers and 20 laptop computers. This is the COVID purchase that I mentioned earlier. Um, several of our computers are coming to end of life and obviously uh, we need to, as everyone is, uh, adapt and be able to work remotely and obviously uh, have more capabilities mm -hmm. to uh, use Zoom and other platforms such as that. So the uh, this was the low price of three and um, this also is just a uh, finance committee motion. Happy to answer any other questions. Uh, so these are, you're saying these will be submitted as a COVID reimbursement potentially for reimbursement? Yes, correct. Yes. yes. Okay, questions for Mr. Wren. Seeing none, I will move to approve uh, for to SHI International for the seven desktop and 20 laptop computers. Second. Second. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Noes. Extensions. Uh, that is approved. Uh, is there any other business to come before the Finance Committee? Seeing none, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. So moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Those abstentions, we stand approved. Mrs. Harrison. Thank you, Mr. McIntyre. I'd like to call to order our committee of the whole meeting of September 10th, 2020. Uh, before us tonight, we have approval of several minutes. So first approval of our committee of the whole minutes from July 9th, 2020. Moved to approve. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve. All those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 No's. Extensions. Those minutes stand approved. Uh, next is approval of our minutes for the Committee of the Whole Meeting of July 23rd, 2020. Move to approve. So moved. It's been moved and seconded to approve. All those in favor, please signify by si saying yes. 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 Noes. Abstentions. Those minutes stand approved. Finally, approval of our Committee of the Whole Meeting minutes from August 6, 2020. Move to approve. Ms. Harrison, Ms. Harrison, I just want to make a note that the agenda shows that these minutes are from our regular <laughs> council meeting and not committee of the whole. Correct. I noticed that, Mr. McIntyre. That's why I made sure I was making note that it's for our committee of the whole meeting oh, minute approval. I apologize. The committee of the whole meeting minute approval were attached to the minutes. I think it was just probably a copy and paste issue. Okay. So we have before us a motion in a second to approve the committee of the whole minutes from August 6, 2020. All those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 Noes, abstentions, those minutes stand approved. Our first business item was discussion of the Regional Dispatch Center. Um, Mr. Costello or Mr. Film or Mr. Stone, I'm not sure if you have any updates for us on those items or if there's been any meetings um, since we've last discussed. I know Chief Film and I discussed a few issues today as I dug into his very large document that he has sent over to us that has lots of different scenarios. Um, I will say my only hesitation as I read through that and I shared that with Chief Film today is the voting methodology for this. As you know, there's different size organizations being involved. Everybody has one equal <laughs> vote into how that works and where some organizations might be bound to pay more money because they're larger in the breakdown of how they're going to share the cost versus the actual voting is actually just a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, so I know Chief Film is going to talk to the county about that, and he said he did not feel that that was 100% decided yet on how that would look. Uh, Mrs. Madam President? Yes. Yes, and also I had a, uh, a couple other questions by some council people that I am going to look into oh. and then I will send out. Um, I would ask that um, any, as I discussed with all of you today, if, if you do have questions, please put them in writing to me so I can accurately express, you know, uh, share your views and I will get those answers for you as, as, as fast as I can. And if it's okay, I would like to share them with the entire council um, when I reply back, if, if that's okay with everybody. 
I, I think that's a good idea. Did anybody have any other questions or discussions on this item tonight? Mr. Feldman. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, Chief, as we keep moving, and I've been to a number of meetings and listened, don't, doesn't the county believe that there would be strength in numbers where who's the leadership in getting everybody on board? It, that would, it falls on the county itself. Okay. As of right now, and um, I mean, it, technically we're all, it's just a, a, you know, we all have, there's a bunch of participants at this point as far as cities. Um, the county has been the lead uh, organi organizer of, of the, uh, the, uh, the project with MCM. Um, so as far as what, what would you like to see from the county? Well, well, I guess what I'm saying is the more people that are committed, you, I've had conversations with you. You said Talmadge is committed, right? Right. I mean, yeah. when, when, when more people and you look at all those cities and townships and people in the county, I mean, and you get more on board, I think it would make sense as dollars then would be dispersed and it would, we would share in some costs and would be some regionalization that everybody's talking about. So I just, I can't find who the county then is leading the role, is taking the leadership position on this. Is that correct? Mayor. Oh, Ms. Harrison, is it okay? <laughs> Sorry, Ms. Harrison. <laughs> yes, yeah. go ahead. Okay, uh, as of the beginning, and it still is that way, um, it was, it's been discussed as a whole amongst the whole group, but it has been brought out to separate groups as we put things together. Uh, all the mayors, all the finance people, all the law departments and things like that. So this has been a work not being hand to, handed to us by some county, but rather the work that has been put in by every city with their expertise. So yeah, the tie-in would be the county, but all these things have been through discussion of separate groups to bring to one whole, as far as this is concerned. There's really no per se leader because we haven't done anything yet. It's it, trying to uh, see if this is even a valid option. And at this point in time, we have decided that it would be a valid option for safety and also saving money and so forth like that. So it's been a it's been a group effort um, along that way. The the county has not told us this is how it's going to be. And if I if I may, uh, Madam President. Yes, Chief Tom. Uh, I think we're going to have a lot more. Uh, well, well, right now, this project has actually been. And Mayor, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but this project's been. Um, you know, besides COVID, which has really stalled everything, you know, but uh, this project, uh, they are waiting on our vote to see what happens to the city of Stowe. They want us part of this project. A lot of the communities are waiting on that. If, if, if this could have been decided by council, um, I think we would know exactly by now, exactly who, what, who was participating um, and who's gonna enter into contract. So as of right now, um, they actually, the whole entire project has been, has been pushed back just for the city of Stowe because they want us part of, this, part of this and the administration wants to be part of this project also. If I could interject one more thing, I can tell you as close to as of even this March, uh, the chief, um, Mr. Costello, Mr. Earl, Chief Stone, uh, Kelly and Jamie, we weren't totally sold on this. Uh, we weren't sure is this the right way to move and so forth like that. But as numbers unfolded and the ability for safety of people, uh, it was one of those things, again, bringing all these groups together to discuss about this. But I can tell you uh, the homework has been done. And uh, like I said, it is, a, it is um, I believe, very necessary. And I think everybody that I named would probably go along with that also. Mr. McIntyre. Uh, thank you, Mr. Harrison. I, um, Chief Film, thanks. You know, I, for talking with me today, and I, you know, I know we talked about a lot of things, and I too am diving into that very lengthy report. You know, there's a lot of good information in there, and uh, you know, one of the key things I'll bring up 
in something as large as this, we could call it a program, if you will, you know, we're, we're taking something that's small components spread around the county and bringing it under one umbrella. So, you know, one of the things I'm looking at is, you know, the ultimate success or failure of something this large is going to be determined by the implementation and how it's going to be implemented. And I know Chief Film is, you know, answering some of those questions and I'll have more questions, uh, you know, that I'll be getting to him as well. So those, you know, why I do share um, Mrs. Harrison's concern, I do have other concerns too. And I know um, that report is very lengthy. There's a lot of great information in there. So, you know, I would encourage everyone to read it. Uh, you know, so once we get past this November election and and the voters decide how how this council is to proceed with this uh, with this item, uh, so we're prepared to get into that because as Chief Film, you know, has already indicated, just because it passes in November, it ain't like January second. Uh, the, the administration is bringing legislation. You know, there's there's a lot of other components that still have to go along with this um, that go along. So I I I thank everyone's you know Chief Film, Chief Stone, and everyone involved for. Uh, you know, for getting the information, you know, to us. And uh, I, I'll i have further questions um, regarding this, but the implementation is a, is a big thing to me. And one of the biggest concerns right now that I had was, and one of the questions, you know, right now, if Stowe, if Stowe Police Department uh, calls, dispatch center goes down, Calga Falls can pick up those calls. And, you know, when I asked the question, what about if a regional uh, dispatch center goes down, then who's going to pick up those calls? You know, so that that's a valid question. And, and if right now we have a backup dispatch center, but if if most of the largest cities in the county are coming under one roof, who's the backup to all that then? So um, I thank Chief again. Thanks, Chief Film. He's he's working on those answers. I'll get those over to you, like I like I said I would. Um, but I just wanted to say I appreciate the time you guys are putting in it and and the time you took to to speak with me and and give me the information that you have so far. So, Mr. Costello. Yes, thank you. Uh, I, I would like to just make a general comment about uh, one municipality, one vote. As the chief said, you know, nothing's been cast in stone, but until we get to the table or permission to go to the table, we can't even argue that point one way or the other. I can tell you that all of the meetings that I have been involved with going forward on this, both virtually and in person, every individual had a voice and every comment was listened to and categorized and discussed as a point for the project, not for the city itself, but for the entire project. There are other regional dispatch centers out there that are functioning right now that have pretty much somewhat the same general structure of one vote for one municipality and it's working well. The uh, other projects that we've worked with Summit County on, um, and the chief can back me up on that, but the, uh, there's been no, uh, I wanna say arm twisting by somebody different to get something better out of the deal. Uh, the one comment, the one regional director said for Chagrin Valley, he said, what is the biggest problem he has with his regional dispatch center? And he said, politics. I'll leave you with that. Thank you, Mr. Costello. Mr. Feldman. Madam Chair, just a quick comment, and this is more directed to the committee of the whole, all council. Can we, can we share answers and questions amongst council? I'd like to be able to know what others are asking, what others are receiving, what others are contemplating as we move forward. I believe that was Chief Film's plan that if somebody asked a question, he would share all of the answers. And um, law department can chime in here if they feel there's an issue, but I don't think there's an issue if there's information sharing like that, as long as there's not discussion amongst council about it. Thank you. Mrs. Channel, did you have something on that? Well, yeah, I, I agree. We can't have, um, you know, due to sunshine laws, we can't have multiple council members communicating with each other about city business. But if there's someone presenting something to council members, um, then, then, then that's not a violation. So just if, if and when you get communications from any, anyone in administration or chief film about 
this topic, just make sure you don't reply all and start discussing it. You know, you can talk directly to the, the sender of the email, Chief Film, but you cannot reply all and talk to each other without violating the Sunshine Laws. And I think it would just be beneficial from Chief Film's position instead of getting the same question three times or somebody thinking they have a question and emailing him, if they knew it's already been asked and answered, that would be valuable to, to save him some time as well. Mr. McIntyre, did you have a question? No, my question got answered, thank you. Uh, are there any other further discussion on this topic this evening? Seeing none, we'll move on to item B, support of naming the Steels Corner Bridge in honor of John Lewis. Mr. Heiler, I will turn this over to you. Thank you very much, Madam President. Uh, we received a lot of comments tonight, um, and I'm not sure, are those gonna be read in the council meeting as opposed to now, uh, Lori? Lori, are, are the comments of those read in the, in the council meeting or are they read now? I'm gonna have Cindy reply to you. Okay, thank you. Cindy? I believe I believe most of the comments that we got were emails, but not many of them had been actually had a request to be read at the council meeting. Okay. Is that correct, Ms. Villers? Correct, they were just um, emails. I only had one person asked to be requested to speak tonight. Why okay. actually have me read into, read into the comments? Well, as we as we read the emails, um, you know, there were comments both ways. Um, a lot of good discussion, and I quite frankly appreciate the all the comments and the uh, whether pro or against. Um, I'm obviously very passionate about this, as I think as we all are. I hope, uh, and I wanted to direct actually my comments in this moment just to um, the comments about being from Ohio. Um, in John Lewis's um, graphic autobiography novel that he he did so that young people could could read and read about his life that was published in 2013. He talks about going on a trip with his Uncle Otis um, in 1951. And he goes from Alabama to through, uh, ten, uh, through Tennessee and then through Kentucky. And then finally he gets to Ohio. And this is what he says about Ohio. It wasn't until I, we got to Ohio that I could feel Uncle Otis relax. And so I relaxed too. By the time we, we reached Lake Erie, and turned east towards Buffalo, I was about to burst with excitement. And the trip to Buffalo was about so you could see a non-segregated city, see what, see what life would be like without segregation. So it was really Ohio that an 11-year-old boy uh, got introduced to what it felt like to be free and to feel welcomed and, and uh, not to be worried about the Jim Crow South. So with that in mind, um, I, I want to say that uh, this motion tonight is is about treating others with with dignity, um, treating others the way you'd want to be treated, and that's really what we're honoring here. We're honoring his his courage at uh, on on March seventh, nineteen sixty five, at the Bridge in Selma, Alabama, and uh, it took a lot of courage to with along with Jose Williams to lead people two by two, six hundred of them and then later to come back uh, two days later with another march. And again, all in the minds of equality and justice. And so anyway, that's it. It's, um, there's no political message here. There's, it's, it's about courage, it's about honor. It's about a lot of wonderful things. And um, I guess I would open it up for discussion from among the uh, members of, of the Committee of the Whole or Mayor for that matter from you. I, I appreciate you coming out so strongly in, the, in your comments in the paper. Uh, for the support of this of this motion, but I would open up to all of you to to share your thoughts. You've certainly heard mine and, and why, and both not only at this meeting but at, sub, at meetings before this. So, anyway, um, Madam President, I, I would open up for anybody to to say what they have to say. Michelle, yes, um, I wanted to say as I thought about this more naming the bridge after John Lewis, I felt it would leave a very impactful and positive feeling in mind for the citizens of Stowe and for those traveling through Stowe. Um, in regards to honoring Fiona Ferris um, that I've been passionate about, I have found a more appropriate tribute that I will be bringing forth to council the next council meeting. So I wanted to let you know 
um, that um, I do think this is a very good thing. Mayor, comments you might have? Yes, um, I will. I'll say um, when we're looking at a highway, I look at it saying our highway interstate system is set up to join us all together. Uh, whether you live in Ohio, whether you live in California, you're probably going to take a highway to get to any state that there is. So there's interstate and there's interstate. Uh, John Lewis uh, was uh, a, a very great leader uh, that helped our whole United States. So I think as far as that's concerned, I think this is why it's important that we go ahead and put this name out there. Uh, you know, people from Oklahoma, and I can name every state, come down Route 8, somebody does. And I think it really speaks volumes of what our community is. Uh, that being said, I know I talked to Ms. Shaw this afternoon, um, have some good ideas as far as honoring other uh, Black leaders, uh, also two Black leaders that came from our community. And uh, like I said, uh, I, I, I applaud her. And uh, like I said, I think this is uh, a win-win. And we have to go ahead and show not only the people that live in Stowe, uh, but everybody else surrounding us, whether in another state or another city, of what we are truly made of and what we, our beliefs are. So that's where I stand. Thank you, Mr. Heiler. Thank you. Mario, when we, when we first um, talked about this idea, you and me, um, you, you had some thoughts at that time. So I, I, I appreciate if you'd share them with the rest of, our, uh, with the, rest of the uh, committee of the whole. Yeah, I just, you know, I view this, uh, you know, overall, it's not just you know, the renaming of a bridge, but it's, it's something that I think is going to spur, um, you know, conversation and conversation about that moment in time in our nation's history, as well as um, what that, you know, led to in terms of equality for um, Americans and um, civil rights. I also think, you know, it's a, it's a good moment in for us as a community and something that will bring us all together as well as um, you know, honoring um, you know what Congressman Lewis, you know, just his journey and the journey of our country. Um, you know, we've made progress. We still have a long way to go, but uh, it's a good um, it's a good reflection point, and uh, I'm happy to support it this evening. Thank you, Mary. Kyle. Yeah, Madam Chair, just a brief comment. Um, I. I I'll, I'll be supporting it. I, I think it initiates a conversation. Um, and in the diversity executive board, we're doing a book study um, by Glenn Singleton, which is Courageous Conversations About Race. Um, and in that book, he references um, Margaret Wheatley, and he says this, human conversation is the most ancient and easiest way to cultivate the conditions for change, personal change, community change, and organizational change. I support it. I think it initiates a conversation, which is what we're supposed to do. Uh, uh, I, I thank everybody that's in support of it, and I think it's a good thing. So thank you. And, and I would just open up for comments if anybody else wants to make a comment with regards to the, to the resolution. Mr. McIntyre. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> you know, I, to be honest with you, you know, I've been torn with this, you know, with this legislation going, you know, I know early on I've made comments, um, you know, the spirit of this, this resolution that Mr. Heiler has vested so much time and passion into, um, you know, I wholeheartedly believe in everything that John Lewis did. While I don't, I can honestly sit here and tell you that, you know, from a political standpoint, I didn't agree with him politically and some of those ideologies, but John Lewis, the civil rights leader, I completely wholeheartedly believe everything he did and, and that he stood for. And because we wouldn't be, you know, we wouldn't be where we are today as a country, you know, you know, uh, the foundations were laid, you know, decades, if not centuries ago, uh, and he continued to pave that way through this. Um, I look at, you know, the times that we find ourselves in, and I've been questioning, 
uh, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't sit there and tell anybody that I read social media comments. You know, most of the time you shouldn't read that because you're just going to beat yourself up when you read over it. Uh, but there were a lot of interesting comments that came out of that, not to mention, uh, you know, the most recent emails that we received today for comments. And I did receive phone calls. You know, I, there's been mixed there's been mixed feelings across the city regarding this whole thing. Um, I will be supporting this legislation this evening. And I, I want to be clear that I'm supporting this legislation as uh, the very thing that's read in the title is, is the civil rights leader, John Lewis. I, I, I'll, I'll be honest, I didn't believe, you know, I didn't uh, agree with him politically, but everything he did as a civil rights leader um, is, uh, those are the very things that, you know, when I served in the military, I went and fought to preserve. Uh, so I will be supporting this legislation. And from a, from a symbolic standpoint, uh, I'll, I'll throw my engineering background in there. You know, the bridge that we're looking at naming, um, it, bridges are meant to uh, fill that gap in a divide. Okay, so that's all this is doing. And, and if anything's more symbolic than what John Lewis did on that date, it, you know, this bridge is very symbolic and very fitting uh, to be named after somebody uh, who did that. And if you read, you know, about that day, uh, I learned a lot about civil rights in school. Um, so I, I, I thank, you know, the members of this, uh, this council, uh, you know, for taking the time and being honest and open about uh, having this conversation. I agree with you, Mr. Mr. Feldman, you know, we do have to have conversations about this. Uh, but again, I, I was torn, you know, there's a lot of things that come about um, from this legislation. And I hope that we, we continue, uh, you know, to bring action uh, moving forward, continuing, we don't just stop, you know, at, you know, at these resolutions and things like that. So um, I thank Mr. Heiler for all the time and effort that he put into this. Um, so I, I just, I'm, I'm going to be out there now to tell you that I will be supporting it this evening. So thank you, Mr. Heiler, for all the time and effort you put into this. And uh, I, I know you're very passionate about it and, uh, you know, it, it shows. So thank you very much. Madam and President, I think Mr. McIntyre um, saying that Mr. Heiler's efforts into this, I think we'd be remiss to say if he did not go above and beyond the calls and conversations he's had to talk to people, to get feedback, to see how this fits in our community and the education he's done and having somebody who's, you know, he's lived through the civil rights movement. He talked very passionately about it before. I think we all, we all felt that emotion when he talked about that. Um, he's put a lot of time and effort into this. He's he's definitely made sure that this fits and that it's appropriate and that people support it. And I, I appreciate all the effort you put in, Mr. Heiler. Um, your passion has definitely come through for this. I think your heart is in the right place. And I think it's the start of what we can do to start talking about this and having these hard conversations. And they are hard conversations, but we have to start somewhere. And I appreciate you getting the ball rolling on that. Ms. Shaw, I hope that you proceed forward and have something for Ms. Ferris that would fit appropriately with her background. Uh, it does not have to be one or the other. I, it's just the first. There could be many things that we recognize over time and I think we need to strive to continue to do that and we need to strive and we talked about legislation and you know, to promote racial equality. We need to keep looking at how we do that in our city and as our council and as our administration. And so I think this is a great effort to kick off that ball rolling and let's just keep it moving forward. Agreed. Mr. Altieri. Uh, yes, Steve, uh, Mr. Heiler, I'd like to uh, thank you again. I know we've had several conversations and I know you put a lot of work into this and appreciate it. And uh, I think you have full support of uh, city council. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. McIntyre. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify one thing too, you know, that this is the one thing that uh, I did notice in some comments and some, you know, some calls that I have. Ultimately, this resolution is, is, is a, a letter of support of this council. The naming of this bridge is not left, is not at the discretion of this city council. This is more than a, this is just a letter of support to move on to those who do have that power to name this bridge. So this is, I just want to, you know, kind of clarify that for the public, because I did get some, you know, I've seen some comments and things like that. So I just wanted to clarify that this, this is a letter of support from this council. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. McIntyre. And that is a good clarification um, for everybody to realize. And Mr. Heiler has talked to 
um, future bodies that be at the state level that would need to approve this. And he's also gotten letters of support from many other people outside of this council to move this forward. So this is just one step on his journey and discussions with many people to move this to the next level. Thank you. I would entertain a motion to move this on to council this evening. I would like to make that, I would like to make that motion. Oh. You go for it, Mr. Heiler. Um, now I'm lost for words. I can imagine that I'm lost for words. Uh, Kyle, you do it. <laughs> I said so moved after <laughs> Madam Chairwoman said it. So I'm good. Make a motion to uh, put, um, support the naming of the Steel's 20 Bridge in honor of John Lewis on tonight's city council agenda. I'll second it. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 Noes. Abstentions, that will appear on tonight's city council meeting. Uh, we do not have any executive session items tonight. So I believe we can, uh, I will entertain a motion to adjourn our committee of the whole to move on to our regular council meeting. So move. So move. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adjourn the committee of the whole. All those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 No abstentions, we are adjourned. I would like to call to order the Stowe City Council meeting of September 10th, 2020 at 7, 11 p.m. Will the clerk please call the roll? Tyler? Yes. McIntyre? Here. Altieri? Here. Bioka? Here. Feldman? Here. Shaw? Present. Harrison? Here. We will move on to the prayer and pledge of allegiance this evening that will be led by Mayor Probonik. I'm not sure I see him at the moment. Excuse me, I'm sorry about that. If we could all bow our heads. Dear Lord, let's look at the things we talked about this evening. Everything that we talked about this evening is to bring good to the people here in the city of Stowe and our surrounding communities, and even one of the items to actually our nation. Let us not forget, and one of our council members already brought this up, let us not for forget the reason why we are naming a bridge moving forward under John Lewis's name. It is to reflect what we believe, how we act, how we are accepting in our community. And I know these are not empty words. I know we all believe this. And Dear Lord, bless us on this as we move forward today to make decisions like this that will mold our community into the future. Amen. Amen. We could stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag United States, States of, America. of America, to the republic, to the republic for and which it stands, one nation. Under God, Under God, indivisible, indivisible liberty, 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 justice, justice for all. For all. <laughs> First on our agenda items, we have several approval of minutes. I would ask for a uh, motion to approve the minutes from our regular council meeting of July 9th, 2020. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 Noes. Abstentions. Those minutes stand approved. Um, approval of our minutes from our regular council meeting, July 23rd, 2020. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 Noes. Abstentions. Those minutes stand approved. Approval of our minutes from our special council meeting on July 31st, 2020. So moved. Approve. Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 Noes. Abstentions. Those minutes stand approved. 
approval of our minutes of our special council meeting on July or on August 5th, 2020. Move to approve. Second. Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 No's, abstentions, those minutes stand approved. And last but not least, approval of our minutes from our regular council meeting on July or on August 6th, 2020. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 No's, abstentions, those minutes stand approved. Ms. Villers, do we have any communications? All items were distributed accordingly. Thank you, Ms. Villers. Um, committee reports. Planning committee did not meet tonight. I believe we will have a meeting um, at our next council meeting. Mr. Fioka? Uh, public improvements did meet tonight. Be happy to uh, answer any questions. Any questions for Mr. Fioka? Uh, roads and safety and finance, Mr. McIntyre. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Harrison. Roads and safety did meet today. We had two items, uh, one legislative item that'll appear uh, uh, on tonight's city council meeting. And then we just kind of got an update uh, from the, uh, the roads program and uh, that it's out for bid. Uh, Finance Committee, we had uh, a number of legislative items uh, come out and one that will be coming up under new business. Um, be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Mr. McIntyre? Seeing none, uh, Mr. Heiler, 2020 Budget Oversight Committee. Uh, no report tonight, but it's time to get uh, moving on the uh, on, on our uh, plan for uh, uh, for efficiency. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Heiler. Committee of the Whole did meet tonight and we have one agenda item um, that will be appearing under legislation tonight. Any other items um, or questions on Committee of the Whole? Seeing none, uh, audience participation. Ms. Villers, if you have any public comments that you would like to share tonight um, on behalf of citizens who have sent them in, I do know that there were no requests to speak at the meeting tonight. I have actually one from Carrie to Hudolik. Mrs. Mrs. Harrison, if I may real quick, I just wanted to, I know we talked about this earlier, just to make mention for those who are listening who may not have got their email sent through that the city was Thank having some, some email issues today. So this, you know, we apologize if you don't hear it, but the city has been, and I know they came out and posted on social media that they've been uh, contending with uh, email server email issues altogether in the city today. Yes, and I did talk to um, some other city employees who said they had had emails sent to them um, from personal email addresses and they bounced back over a day later. So even though you sent it and you feel like maybe it was sent, there's a good chance that it is stuck out on the wild, uh, the wild web out there somewhere and has not made it to us. You may get a bounce back later, but if you do not hear something read that you've requested to, please um, you know, email Ms. Villers in a couple of days. I'm hopefully... Uh, Mr. Pravonica, hopefully you'll update the public once our email system has got its kinks worked out. Yes, I will. Thank you. Thank you for that reminder, Mr. McIntyre. Um, go ahead, Ms. Villers. I apologize. Carrie Suhudolnik, 4263 Meadowlock Trail. I would like to voice my support of naming the Steels Corners Bridge in honor of the late John Lewis. While I appreciate the steps the city has taken thus, this far to show that our Black community matters, we still have much work to do. I believe that change begins at the grassroots level, and I absolutely support Congre Congressman Lewis when he said, never, ever be afraid to make some noise and get in good trouble, necessary trouble. I know I have made trouble for the city council in the past, and I will continue fighting for what I believe is right for our community. We don't always see eye to eye, and that's okay. I hope that we can come together on this one to honor a great civil rights leader, to show the Black community that they matter, and to encourage deliberate, positive, deliberate and positive change in our community. Thank you, Ms. Villers. And like uh, Ms. Villers mentioned, we all did get several emails earlier today um, that people had sent in after um, there was a news article aired last week about the bridge and they were distributed to all of council members. We will move on to city officials reports. Uh, Mayor Pravonik. Thank you, Ms. Harrison. Um, first of all, um, as we've already talked about the heavy rains that we had this past uh, Monday on Labor Day, um, 
I, I, I want to thank the residents uh, and I want to also thank the uh, council people that came out. Um, I can tell you I was out there for about seven hours, uh, but the respect of the people I met with um, were addressing these issues. Um, I, I shudder to think, and uh, I know, uh, let's see, he's already gone for the day. Mike Jones, uh, we talked about this. I shuddered, oh, there's Mike. I'm sorry, Mike, you moved. Uh, <laughs> shudder to think if we wouldn't have went and started being as aggressive approaching these issues, what this past Monday would have looked like. Uh, we did put out on uh, Facebook Monday evening to go ahead and reach out because we want to hear from our residents. I always say we want to hear both good and bad. We need to know where these problems are. Even though this was, Mike and I talked about it, 100, 500 year flood, whatever you want to call it, we, we've been getting these. So we need to figure out how we can go ahead and manage this. And we want to make sure that no resident is left behind. And I give uh, kudos uh, to all of our administrators uh, with that handling our residents. Uh, I've got many great comments that people said, wow, you already came out. Uh, we have visited several houses. We're gonna hit everybody that wrote in and uh, I appreciate your patience. But again, thank you very much uh, for how well this was handled both on both sides. Uh, Rob Kurtz and I have been out uh, busy visiting uh, our businesses. Uh, we haven't run into any really bad news. And uh, in fact, it's been good news. And so that also ties in with Jim Costello and uh, John Earl's reports. Uh, what is good for them is good for us. And uh, we look forward with continuing business uh, with them as we move forward into 2021. A um, couple things, I know we talked about the, the, the bridge over to Del Durbin. Uh, what an excellent feat that was. Uh, we've already got a, a group of uh, volunteers lined up to go ahead and paint two of our historical houses over in uh, Silver Springs. Uh, those are starting to look a little bit worn, shop worn. So outside you're going to see that. And again, uh, that is going to be totally done by volunteers. So I, I appreciate uh, the people that have reached out and, and went from that point. Uh, tomorrow is of course a very solemn day for everybody. Not only the people here in the city of Stowe, but clear across our nation. Tomorrow, uh, March, September 11th. And we will also have a September 11th memorial uh, that will actually start at 8.30 tomorrow, uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, we also have that on our website because we wanted to make sure that we truly honored everyone. Uh, we know that people are nervous about COVID. Maybe you don't wanna leave your house. So that is on our website. We also didn't know what the weather was going to be like. So we wanted to make sure all of our I's were dotted and T's are crossed, but we will be holding a 9-11 service tomorrow morning here on city grounds at 8.30, uh, right in front of the 9-11 Memorial in front of city hall. Uh, so if you can attend, uh, the only thing we ask is that you wear a mask and you maintain that proper social distance of six feet. So that is a very big thing for tomorrow. Uh, Bulldog bags kick back off uh, this morning uh, for the new school year. Uh, good and bad, as far as that's concerned. We almost filled 800 bags. Uh, good that we have volunteers and our community fully supporting this. Bad that we need to go ahead and pack 800 bags. But that says a lot about our community. Uh, tying that in is what I said before, like with what Mr. Heiler uh, has promoted out there uh, with the bridge. This is what we are. Uh, this is what why they call us Bulldogs. And like I said, a lot of great things happening in Stowe. Uh, a couple other, uh, we had drive-in bingo uh, this week over at the uh, Senior Center. Uh, very well received. And again, it's just that creativity. Uh, for any of you that haven't heard, uh, we are bringing back window painting, uh, fall, uh, fall and Halloween window painting, uh, just like it was 20 years ago and we all reminisce about Stowe Kent Plaza. 
Uh, not saying it's going to be held at Stokemp Plaza, but we're trying to go ahead and come up with some different things such as the drive-in bingo, decorating windows. Uh, actually, we have another program out there decorating businesses and neighborhoods that we're going to have people to where we're going to be able to advertise and people can come out and take a look. So we're trying to go ahead and be as creative as possible in the city for people to remain involved, remain social distance, but also to be able to go uh, through normal life, whatever normal life is here in 2020. So with that being said, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions for Mayor Pravonik? Uh, seeing none, um, finance director's report, Mr. Costello. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I'll just quickly go over the uh, current bill listing. Current bill listing is 1.9 mil. We had 692,000 in payroll, 148,000 in medical and dental benefits, 274,000 for pensions, 32,000 for life insurance. Workers' comp was 26,000. Uh, ASME care was 5,000. Then we get into the good old refunds for Parks and Rec of 2300 income tax, 21000 uh, Forestry had uh, refunds of 3100 and water had a return of uh, $53. That's really all I have to say, other than I would hope for your favorable consideration on the motion to replace our tax auditor two this evening. Thank you, Mr. Costello. Any questions for Mr. Costello this evening? Seeing none, Director of Budget and Management, Mr. Earl. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, just want to mention, we will be putting out our summer report on the general fund uh, in the next few days uh, that shows the year to date uh, in the revenues uh, compared to last year and the budget compared to last year's budget. And just in general, it'll show that the steady improvement has continued in our revenues. We still have our losses from earlier in the year that we, they will, we'll have those for the year and they will uh, result in losses. But uh, the, the general uh, steady improvement from, uh, from the early part of the year has continued and we'll, we'll provide that report shortly. Thank you, That's Mr. All I had to report. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Earl this evening? Seeing none, uh, law director's report, Mrs. Six. Thank you very much. Um, nothing to report from the law department. Any questions for Mrs. Six this evening? Seeing none, chief of staff service director's report, Mr. Wren. Thank you, Mrs. Harrison. Um, I wanted to uh, address the email issues we've been having. Um, I found out late this afternoon, our IT department found out late this afternoon uh, that the sto.oh.us uh, doesn't exist, that domain doesn't exist anywhere but on our campus. It seems that one of our um, vendors that we use was contacted for renewing that and uh, did not contact us. So we have since changed um, hosting companies uh, and are now going with a company that uh, that's through the state of Ohio may host uh, government emails for free. So uh, our IT department put in a trouble ticket and government agencies moved to the front of the line. So hopefully we'll see um, this resolved uh, quickly uh, tomorrow. I, uh, as soon as uh, things are up and running, I will uh, let council know, uh, but hopefully, uh, like I said, tomorrow the situation will be resolved. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Wren. Any questions for Mr. Wren? Mr. Heiler? You're Mr. Heiler, I believe you're muted. Sorry about that. Um, Nick, I, I think I've been on record as saying that night uh, that IT is my is my biggest nightmare. Um, and again, it comes from my banking day. So I, I appreciate the I, and I appreciate the care you're giving it and, and, the, uh, and how you're handling it. Um, as we move forward, I guess I would just make a request of the mayor and, and, and anybody else who's involved 
and that is to just really pay attention to this and um, it, you know, just make sure this doesn't happen again. I, I uh, uh, again, my biggest concern is is that at some point our records um, could get held for ransom, as we've seen in other scenarios, and most notably with Garmin watches, that was the most most recent high profile one. So, again, I support whatever you have to do, and and uh, and I appreciate the the work that's been put in today. Uh, but this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about that we just have to prepare for the un the unexpected. So that's it. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Harrison, if I can add one additional thing too, because I know it's been a concern of city council. Um, we're, I of course can't explain all the details, but we are migrating to a, a cloud-based system, which will allow us to upgrade our email systems. And that will include the um, OWE or OWA, one of the two, whatever it's called, um, that council utilizes. So you'll see a much more uh, modern fluid version coming up. It's gonna take uh, a couple of months to make that happen, but that's uh, in meeting with IT, that process is already underway. Thank you, Mr. Wren. And Mr. Wren, I know you and I had, uh, had asked you earlier in the week and we talked previously after we passed our um, legislation on racial equality, we had had in there that we were gonna provide training to city employees and to elected officials. If you could provide an update on that for everybody, I know you've provided it to me, but I think it'd be good to share with everyone. Sure. Um, we're working with uh, the United Way. Uh, we reached out to other communities to see what they were doing. Um, and we're actually piggybacking off of what Cuyahoga Falls was doing. So we reached out to the United Way. It'll be a, a, a two to three hour session to start that will be done on Zoom. It's actually September 22nd at 1.30. Um, I will send an invite out to council members as well as uh, the cabinet members will be included in that. Then the goal from there is to record that session and have our employees uh, watch that session as part of their training. So that'll be step one in our diversity training. And then I'll work with Mr. Campbell from the United Way on additional trainings moving forward. But this is the initial first step and uh, we're excited to work with United Way and, and, and like I said, develop a program, not just a one-time effort here, but a program moving forward. Mr. Ryan, I appreciate your efforts on that and sharing that information with us. And I think um, it's encouraging to hear that we're working on a program and looking at more than just one thing moving forward. Mayor Pravonik. Yes, if I could also interject, um, Clerk of Courts has reached out to us and they are also going, her, her uh, group is going to be taking that course also. So we wanna make sure that we can cover everybody that we can of the people's lives we touch through this diversity program. So like I said, uh, it's, 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 it's a great program. And like Mr. Wren said, it's not going to stop right at, after we do three hours, that isn't good enough. So that's where we're at, thank you. Thank you, Mayor Pravani. That's encouraging to hear too, that we're encouraging other people to go through this too. Ms. Shaw? I just want to say thank you so much, Mr. Wren, for um, putting the wheels in motion, and I really appreciate it. And Mr. Wren, I think we all talked about it earlier with all the storms on Monday, but again, if you can send uh, the appreciation to your staff for out there working, working in that wonderful weather we had. Um, it was very weird to get that much rain that quickly, as we haven't had any in a while, and it was very interesting. I agree with you looking at the golf course and seeing how quickly it receded. I was very surprised at how quickly some of that did to recede and go down. So it's good to see that they was able to clear up pretty quickly. Thank you. I'll pass that on. Um, city engineers report. We have Mr. Jones tonight. Thank you, Ms. Harrison. I would like to start with a waterline project update. Marhoff for Iona Waterline. Uh, Fabrizi has completed the approximately 1,400 linear feet of the 3,500 linear feet of waterline installation. The first section from Darrow to Marhoffer detention basin has passed the pressure test. Fabrizi will continue to lay eight inch water main while waiting on bacterial testing on that first section. We expect mainline work to be completed in the first week of October with new water services and restoration being completed by mid-November. Kent State Airport Waterline, now that the dry weather is over, Trimore will be seeding most of the airport property affected by the waterline installation. We expect project to be completed before the end of the month. 
Marsh Road pump station, new VFDs and pumps have been installed, check valves and the SCADA controls to be completed within the next two months. Surveyor would need to be hired to begin design of the Homewood waterline installation. Emergency replacement of waterline on Comanche is nearly complete. On to the stormwater projects, M. Campbell Contracting has completed the Treeside Drive Ember replacement, Chestnut Drive improvements and Surrey Hill storm replacement projects. The engineering department is finalizing the plans and bid documents for the Silver Lake Towers bridge replacement. We anticipate going out to bid mid-October. That concludes the city engineer's report. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Mr. Jones this evening? Thank you, Mr. Jones, for attending for Mr. McCleary this evening. I appreciate the updates. Um, police chief's report, Chief Film. Thank you, Madam President. I do not have a report for tonight, but I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Chief Film? Ms. Shaw? Um, Chief Film, I just wanted to say two things. Um, in regards to the Relay for Life that happened, um, thank you so much. You have an incredible staff and they protected everybody and uh, let, it, let us on a great parade around the city. And I really appreciate that. You're and welcome. this also goes to Chief Film and Chief Stone. As I always say, you never know how much you appreciate the safety forces unless you really need them. And unfortunately, my mother needed them, them again and everyone responded in a timely manner and was so kind and generous to her. So I just wanted to say thank you both very much. Welcome. Ms. Shaw, I hope your mom is okay and all that. And I think we are very lucky to have our safety forces and our, and our first responders here. Uh, Fire Chief's report, Chief Stone. Thank you, Madam President. I do have a bit of a report. I do want to mention one of our lieutenants who uh, has spent a considerable amount of time um, honing his skills on the technical rescue team. He uh, is Lieutenant Andy Hopkins. He, in recent years, joined Ohio Task Force One, who you might have seen mentioned on the news occasionally in the past couple of weeks. Task Force One is an elite team of specialists who uh, train for various types of rescue, including national disasters as well as natural uh, disasters. Lieutenant Hopkins was activated on August 26 to go down to Louisiana with Ohio Task Force One. And they staged in Shreveport uh, for staging until the hurricane passed. And then they went down into Lake Charles to provide search and rescue after the hurricane uh, uh, Laura made landfall. The team spent its entire mission in the Lake Charles and Calcasso Parish, I believe it's called, of Louisiana. And the team covered a wide area uh, in this parish uh, doing searches and damage assessments for FEMA. They've worked hard in a, an incredible heat. I saw him the other day and he said it was not fun. Um, at least one of the members had to have some IV fluids to uh, recover from some dehydration and heat exhaustion. Uh, the team did return here to Ohio on September 3rd. Lieutenant Hopkins returned to his shift uh, this past week. And in case you're wondering, I know John Earl um, is, is pleased that FEMA does this. Uh, FEMA pays us for this. They pay us back the, uh, all the funds that it costs us to send somebody down there. Um, and they uh, do reimburse the department for the salary of the team member while he's deployed so that we at home don't bear the cost of a disaster somewhere else in the country. I'm very proud of uh, Andy and his dedication to our city and to our Ohio and to the team as well as the, uh, you know, the country. And I think it's very commendable and it's worth mentioning tonight I'd uh, be happy to answer any other questions. Thank you, Chief Stone, for sharing that. And I did see some of those posts shared on social media of some of the work they were doing down there. And I think it's very honorable that we have one of those task force one guys here in Ohio right on our on your staff. So I think that's great. And it's a good honor for the city. And glad he made it home safely. Uh, we have a lot of guys at my work that work down in that area. And they also complain about the heat. And I also complain about pronouncing the names down there because some of them are tricky. Yes. So, Mayor Pravonik. Yes, I was remiss. If I can just add one thing, I shuffled this through my paperwork, and I think this also ties into not only uh, uh, not only to tomorrow, uh, September 11th, but we also have a proclamation for September 14th. Uh, on September 14th, 1814, during the War of 1812, Francis Scott Key composed the lyrics to the Star Spangled Banner after witnessing the overnight. British bombardment of Fort McHenry in Maryland. 
And whereas Key watched the siege while under detainment on a British ship and composed the words of what one day would be designated our national anthem. After, observe, after observing Fort McHenry's flag survive the 1800 bomb assault, and whereas the patriotic lyrics were published in a Baltimore newspaper on September 20th, 1814. To the, to the Star Spangled Banner was regarded as a national anthem by most branches of the US Armed Forces and other groups. However, it was not until 1916 when President Woodrow Wilson signed an executive order formally designating it as such. And whereas Congress passed an act confirming Wilson's presidential order and on March 3rd, 1931, President Hoover signed it into law, the Star Spangled Banner became the official United States National Anthem. So now therefore, I, John Probonik, Mayor of the City of Stowe, Ohio, in recognition and honor of the William Wetmore chapter, chapter of the United States Daughters of 1812, do hereby proclaim Monday, September 14th, 2020, as Star Spangled Banner Day. I urge all citizens to continue to remember and study the history of the United States, as well as the Constitution, and reflect on the privilege of being an American with all the rights and responsibilities with which that privilege involves. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Pravonik. Mr. Feldman. Yeah, Madam President, uh, thank you. Uh, just to, um, we are also uh, want to thank our first responders, um, Chief Film and Chief Stone. I appreciate uh, both of you with tomorrow's football game on 9-11. We will be bringing out the Stowe Police Honor Guard. Um, they will be presenting the colors. We'll have an announcement for Patriots Day, uh, a moment of silence, uh, the national anthem, the band is playing America the Beautiful. Um, Chief Stone, thank you for bringing the ladder truck out, the large flag. So um, although we don't have a great crowd because we're limited with spectators, uh, we appreciate uh, both of your involvements and our first responders in, uh, in a small ceremony prior to, prior to kickoff. So thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Feldman. Any other items? for either of the chiefs this evening. Seeing none, uh, we will move on to our next agenda item. Any old business to come before council this evening? Seeing none, uh, any new business to come before council this evening? I move to uh, authorize the hiring of a tax auditor to. Second. It's been moved and seconded to to authorize the hiring of a tax auditor too. Ms. Villers, will you please call the roll? Tyler? Yes. McIntyre? Yes. Altieri? Yes. Bioka? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Harrison? Yes. That authorization has passed. Mr. Costello, I'm sure you'll be happy to move along with posting for that. I am, thank you very much. Um, we will now move on to the disposition of ordinances and resolutions. Um, I would like to take these items out of order tonight and move item L to the top of the list. And I will um, turn this over to Mr. McIntyre, but before we do that, I would like to invite um, Ken Mifflin into our meeting for this resolution this evening. <coughs> there he is. <laughs> Mr. And McIntyre, thanks. I will turn this one over to you. All right, uh, thank you. Um, I would like to introduce resolution 2020-124 uh, and ask the clerk to please read it by in its entirety. A resolution extending the official gratitude and commendation of the citizens of the city of Stowe, Ohio in recognizing the law enforcement career and contributions to the community of Stowe Police Lieutenant Kenneth Milflin on the occasion of his retirement. 
whereas it is appropriate that this city council should honor those citizens who have performed with uncommon devotion and enthusiasm throughout their careers in law enforcement. And whereas Kenneth Mifflin, retired police lieutenant of the city of Stowe served in law enforcement for the last 33 years and is well respected by fellow law enforcement officers in the community. And whereas his law enforcement career began in 1987 with the Cleveland Heights Police Department and hired by the Stowe Police Department in 1995, where he spent the next 25 years of benevolent service to the citizens of our great community. And whereas he spent 17 years of his career serving in the Detective Bureau, where he was named as the top cop of Summit County Prosecutor in 2010 for his investigation of an aggra aggravated arson and murder case that led to a conviction with a received national television recognition and whereas he served as a polygraph examiner for the Stokes Police Department and was a member of the Metro SWAT team for 12 years, and whereas he was promoted to Sergeant in 2012, where he was a graduate of the Ohio Police Executive Leadership College in 2016 and promoted to Lieutenant in 2018, and were out through his exemplary career, career Police Lieutenant Mifflin demonstrated the utmost professionalism, ability and integrity, winning the unbridled respect and admiration of his colleagues, fellow officers, and a grateful public. Thank you, Ms. Villers. Lieutenant Mifflin, um, congratulations on your retirement. I'm glad you could join us virtually this evening. I know this is a a whole new way to give commendations to people, but we were happy you could make it this evening to join us. Um, we hope you're enjoying retirement and we thank you for your years of service to the city of Stowe. They are greatly appreciated by our citizens and by your fellow colleagues, I'm sure. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for the resolution. It's, it's a great honor. It's very humbling. And I just want to say thank you for council's uh, support for the safety forces of the city of Stowe. And it's been an honor to have served the citizens of Stowe, to serve the citizens of Stowe for the last 25 and a half years. Um, you know, I, the time went by quick. You know, I can't believe how fast it really went, but uh, you know, retirement is here and it sure as heck doesn't feel like retirement yet. It feels like it's a long, long vacation right now. Um, but I'm not, that's not to say I'm not enjoying it. I'm just saying it just seems like a vacation. But thank you again for everything. Thank you. Are there any other council members that would like to make any comments this evening? Mr. McIntyre. Yes, I'd like to extend my, you know, personal uh, gratitude. Um, I know, you know, COVID-19 hit and, you know, it, it kind of slowed me getting into meet a, meeting a lot of the police officers. I know I've, uh, I've had the opportunity to eat, uh, to meet uh, Lieutenant Mifflin on a couple occasions. Uh, I think one was probably a few days or the week before his retirement. Um, I'd like to thank you for your time and service. You know, I've had uh, family members that have served in law enforcement. Um, and I noted, uh, you know, see the police department's post of your retirement, uh, you know, gave me an opportunity to look back on some of the, uh, uh, some of the great things you've done in your career here. And uh, I'm sure the accolades that you've achieved in, in your time here can only, uh, uh, is just, you know, we've only recognized a little of it. Um, your experience with, uh, you know, reading back through past news articles, uh, and your investigation and your ability to you know, question and, and do those things is just, it, it fascinated me. And I'd like to personally thank you for your years of service uh, here to the Stowe Police Department. And I hope you enjoy your retirement. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. McIntyre. Mr. Heiler. And I, I want to say thank you. Um, God, it goes back. I can't believe the, uh, the bank office back. Uh, it's been a long ago. It's been 20 whatever years. And and then the time I had the break in at the house here and you responded and, um, you know, and I still remember how upset I was and you come up, you get out of the car and you got a big smile on your face and it made a difference. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Heiler. Ms. Shaw. Ms. Shaw, I believe you're on mute. There you go. If memory serves me correct, um, you were on forensic files, correct? That's correct. And uh, my fiance and I watched it the other night and was so proud that somebody from the city of Stowe represented us in such a great light. So thank you. 
Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Mr. Altieri. Uh, yes, I'd like to say uh, thank you, Lieutenant Milton, and uh, congratulations and enjoy your retirement. Uh, I suspect you have a few things to do around the house after that vacation time's over. <laughs> Oh yeah, that uh, the list is is growing, and I'm I'm getting a few of those things taken care of. But yes, you're absolutely right, Mr. Fioka. I just wanted to uh, again express my uh, congratulations on retirement and your long and distinguished career with the city. Uh, you're definitely um, will definitely be missed, but uh, I'm sure you're looking forward to the future. So thank you very much. Mr. Feldman. Lieutenant Mifflin, thank you for all those extra duty assignments in the stadium. Um, you and your wife's work with our, with our uh, majorettes, right? And right. We, we appreciate all that. It was a team effort out there. So, uh, but thank you for a uh, great service and a great career with citizens of Stowe and this community. So thank you. Thank you very much. It's been really great working with you. Chief Film. Lieutenant, uh, council doesn't know, uh, Lieutenant and I were partners in DB back uh, in the 90s for three years. I like to think that I taught him everything he knows, but uh, we, right. know that's not, we know that's not true. Uh, absolutely one of the best detectives um, the city's ever seen. Um, he's now a current rock star, as I like to call him, uh, with all the different shows he has, uh, he, he's been on, and that's only because of his dedication to this community uh, and to, to our citizens and to law enforcement. Uh, he's done an outstanding job uh, the last eight years as a supervisor. Um, I'm very proud of him. I'm gonna miss him. Um, we grew old together. I think he grew a little older than I did so far, but uh, he's done a great job, outstanding work, and I'm very proud to serve with you. Thank you, Ken. Thank you very much, Chief. I appreciate that. The six. A lot of department would say thank you as well. You've done a great job for us and we appreciate all your hard work. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Mayor Pravonik. Ken, you already look five years younger. <laughs> uh, so like I said, uh, probably in another two or three months, you're even gonna look 10 years. So it looks like retirement's already agreeing with you uh, and best of luck in your retirement though. Thank you for all your service to the city of Stowe. Thank you, Mayor. I appreciate that. Lieutenant Mifflin, we do appreciate you attending this way. I know it's a, a little uncommon for us to go through things like this, but you know we're all making the best of this and adjusting as we have to. And I believe Mr. McIntyre is going to get with you to present the commendation in person so you can have that for your house. Sounds good. Thank you very much again uh, for having me on here. And again, it's been an extreme honor. Uh, and a lot of things that I've been, uh, you know, talked about and commended for, I could not have done without all the help of a, a lot of great men and women that I worked with, you know, uh, from the chief on down, as he said, we were partners for, uh, for a few years there. And uh, it was a great experience. Um, it was a great career. And uh, I'm very grateful for all the great people I've worked with. And um, we'll see what the future holds. Thank you again. Thank you, Lieutenant Mifflin. Thank you. All right. So I'd like, I think to, I'd like to move to suspend the rules. Second. It's been moved and seconded to suspend the rules. All those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 No's, abstentions, the rules have been suspended. Move to adopt. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt resolution 20 124. I think we've discussed it at length here. I would ask the clerk to please call the roll. Tyler? Yes. McIntyre? Yes. Altieri? Yes. Fioka? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Thank you, Lieutenant Mifflin. And like I said, Mr. McIntyre will get with you so you can have a copy of that for yourself. Sounds we great. We hope you have a, a great week. Thank you very much. You do the same. Thank Thanks. you, everybody. All right.
I appreciate everybody's time and um, having Lieutenant Mifflin in tonight. Like I said, these are unusual times to do this this way, but um, definitely that years of service to our city deserve to be recognized. So we will now move back to our regularly scheduled programming and we will move on to ordinance um, item A, ordinance 2020-77. 20, 20 um, Mr. Wren, I do have some uh, changes on that that we've discussed and I have not had a chance to get those to you yet. So I will work on getting those over to you before our next meeting, if that's okay. That sounds good. Okay, we will leave 2020-77 on the table. Um, Mr. McIntyre, I believe the next several are yours. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Harrison. I'd like to introduce ordinance 2020-114 and ask the clerk to please read it by its title. An ordinance authorizing the mayor to make an enter to a contract with the Summit County Public Defenders Commission a provider of criminal defense services for the year 2020 without the necessity of public bids authorizing the finance director to appropriate encumber and pay funds for said services as set forth herein and declaring an emergency. Move to suspend the rules. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded to suspend the rules for 2020-114. All those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 Noes, abstentions, the rules have been suspended. Move to adopt. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt ordinance 2020-114. Uh, further discussion on this item. Seeing none, I'd ask the clerk to please call the roll. Tyler? Yes. McIntyre? Yes. Altieri? Yes. Yoka? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Ordinance 2020 has 114 has been adopted and will take effect according to its terms. I'd like to introduce Ordinance 2020-115 and ask the clerk to please read it by its title. An ordinance authorizing the mayor to make an interim to a renewed five-year contract with the County of Summit, Ohio, an intergovernmental provider of animal control services for from September 1, 2020 through August 31st, 2025, without the necessity of public bids authorizing the finance director to appropriate encumber and pay funds for said services as set forth herein and declaring an emergency. Move to suspend the rules. Second. second. It's been moved and seconded to suspend the, the rules. All those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 <laughs> Noes. Abstentions, the rules are suspended. Move to adopt. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt ordinance 2020-115. Further discussion on this item. <clears throat> Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Tyler? Yes. McIntyre? Yes. Altieri? Yes. Fioka? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Harrison. Yes. Ordinance 2020-115 has been adopted and will take effect <laughs> according to its terms. I'd like to introduce 2020-116 and ask the clerk to please read it by its title. An ordinance authorizing an expenditure to MRT Properties Incorporated as settlement of its moral claim against the city for damage incurred, incurred to storage unit as a result of Stowe police officers during a performance of their job duties and declaring an emergency. Move to suspend the rules. Second. Been moved and seconded to suspend the rules. All those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 Noes. Extensions, the rules stand suspended. Uh, move to adopt. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt ordinance 2020-116 discussion. Uh, I just, I mean, I think, you know, from hearing what the law direct, uh, the law department had to say in terms of, you know, appears that there's, there's other ways to recover, you know, these costs through the contract that this property or this storage unit had with uh, the client. I, I don't see any reason why, um, 
that and that the police department did anything wrong in addressing the uh, the call that they had and if that was the only means necessary to get in there uh given the, the type of call that it was i mean um i i can't i won't be supporting this uh this this evening Further discussion? Being none, will the clerk please call the roll? Tyler? No. McIntyre? No. Altieri? No. Yoka? No. Feldman? No. Shaw? No. Harrison? No. Ordinance 2020-116 um, has failed. Uh, I'd like to introduce ordinance 20-117 and ask the clerk to please read it by its title. An ordinance authorizing an expenditure to Eric Fink as settlement of his moral claim against the city for damage incurred to a passenger side truck and mirror as a result of a hanging tree limb and declaring an emergency. Uh, move to suspend the rules. Second. It's been moved and seconded to suspend the rules. All those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 No's. Abstentions. The rules are suspended. Move to adopt. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt ordinance 2020-117. Discussion. Uh, I I just, you know, reading through the, the letter that Mr. Fink had sent over, you know, I mean, the argument that he's making is that, and I, I understand where the city's at, you know, with certain things saying that, you know, they were, they didn't know about it um, until somebody does it. But at the end of the day, when I read through, you know, some of the, the, the codified ordinances that maintenance and pruning does fall on the city. Um, if So I, I can't see why that, uh, that notifying the city, you know, if, you know, potholes are one thing, certain things are another, but obviously the obligation of uh, maintenance and pruning, you know, under the codifies doesn't indicate that it, it has to be if a, there's a branch hanging or things like that has to be brought to the city's attention. So I, I, I don't see no reason why I won't support uh, uh, Mr. Fink's moral claim for his damage to his truck. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Tyler? No. McIntyre? Yes. Altieri? No. Fioka? No. Feldman? No. Shaw? Yes. Harrison? No. Ordinance 2020-117 has failed. Mr. McIntyre, I believe the next one is yours as well. Uh, I'd like to introduce Ordinance 2020-118 and ask the clerk to please read it by its title. A resolution designating the Huntington National Bank of Cleveland, Kent, Ohio, as an authorized depository of the active deposits of the city of Stowe, Ohio. Move to suspend the rules. Second. It's been moved and seconded to suspend the rules. All those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 No's. Abstentions, the rules have been suspended. Move to adopt. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt. Resolution 2020-118, further discussion. Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Taylor? Yes. McIntyre? Yes. Altieri? Yes. Yoka? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Shaw? Shaw? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Uh, resolution 20-118 20, uh, 20 has been adopted and will take effect according to its terms. I'd like to introduce Ordinance 2020-119 and ask the clerk to please read it by its title. An ordinance authorizing the reimbursement for expenses incurred by employees as a result of obtaining a flu shot and declaring an emergency. Move to suspend the rules. Second. It's been moved and seconded to suspend the rules. All those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 
Noes, abstentions, the rule stands suspended. Move to adopt. Second. second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt ordinance 2020-119. Discussion on this item. I, I have a question. Mr. Altieri. Uh, do, do, do the employees, they're getting reimbursed. Do they take time off from work to get the shot or do they just, uh, whenever they go to the pharmacy, get the shot? Is it pay, paid time off is my question. I don't think it's paid time off, no. No. Okay. There's, they're just, they're on their own arranging the, the shot. And, 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 do, and do you think uh, there'll be as much, much participation since uh, it's not easily, you know, you're, you're before you just go to city hall and, and, they're, and you're getting right. your shot there, you expect as much participation? Probably not, probably okay. not. All right, thank you. Further discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Tyler? Yes. McIntyre? Yes. Altieri? Yes. Ioka? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Harrison? Yes. I would like to introduce our ordinance 2020-119 uh, has been adopted and will take effect according to its terms. I would like to introduce ordinance 2020-120 20, and ask the clerk to please read it by its title. An ordinance determining to appropriate certain permanent easements, temporary easements, and fee simple interest for certain sidewalk improvements to the State Route 91, Darrow Road, located generally between Uniondale Drive and Fitch Creek Road in the City of Stowe, County of Summit, pursuant to Resolution Number 2020-110, directing the law, directing the law director to proceed in court of competent jurisdiction and such appropriation and declaring an emergency. Would move to suspend the rules. Second. It's been moved and seconded to suspend the rules. All those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 Noes. Abstentions. Abstains. The rules have been. Mr. McIntyre abstains. Miss Fillers. Um. I would. Uh, the rules have been suspended. I would move to adopt Ordinance 2020-120. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, discussion on this item. I just wanted to make it, I, I'm abstaining on this piece of legislation. This, you know, this stems back to past pieces of legislation and uh, one of the companies that's involved uh, that I do, that I have the potential to work with uh, professionally um, is the reason why I'm abstaining on this. Thank you, Mr. McIntyre. Any further discussions? Mr. Heiler. Thank you. Uh, Mike Jones, is there, is there anything else you'd, you'd like to share on this uh, enlighten us at all? Here you go. No, sir, not unless you have a specific question that I may be able to ask. Okay, no, that's fine. That's fine. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, seeing no further discussion on this item, I would ask the clerk to please call the roll. Tyler? Yes. McIntyre? Stain. Altieri? Yes. Yoka? Yes. Feldman? Happy to say yes. Shaw? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Ordinance 2020-120 has passed and will take effect according to its terms. Back I'd like to, to you, Mr. McIntyre. I'd like to, thank you. I'd like to introduce Ordinance 2020-121 and ask the clerk to please read it by its title. An ordinance authorizing the mayor to make an enter to a contract with Ergo Flex Systems Incorporated, a sole source provider for, for the repair of three dispatch work stations at the safety building without necessity of bid and declaring an emergency. Move to suspend the rules. Second. It's been moved and seconded to suspend the rules. All those in favor, please signify by saying yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Noes, abstentions. The rules are suspended. Move to adopt. Second. To so move and seconded and adopt ordinance 2020-121 discussion. Seeing no discussion, will the clerk please call the roll? Tyler? Yes. McIntyre? Yes. Altieri? Yes. Bioka? 
Yes. Feldman? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Ordinance 2020-121 has passed and will take effect according to its terms. Uh, I'd like to introduce Ordinance 2020-122 and ask the clerk to please read it by its title. An ordinance authorizing the mayor to make an enter to a contract with Powell Rescue Systems Incorporated, a sole source provider for the purchase of one Genesis e 2.0 battery-powered push-pull ram used for extrication and expense for which or a portion thereof could be become reimbursed, reimbursed by a grant funded by the 2018 Assistance to Firefighters Grant needed to assist the City of Stowe's Fire Force. Move to suspend the rules. Second. It's been moved and seconded to suspend the rules. All those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 Noes, abstentions, the rules have been suspended. Move to adopt. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt ordinance 2020-122. Uh, further discussion on this item. Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll. Tyler? Yes. McIntyre? Yes. Altieri? Yes. Yoko? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Shaw? Yes. I believe the next one is for... Uh... Wait, hold on, I think Ms. Villers, Ms. Shaw did say yes. Maybe, I think you yes. broke up a little bit, Ms. Shaw. Sorry, yes. And then Harrison. Yes. Thank you. Ordinance 2020-122 has passed and will take effect according to its terms. Mr. Heiler, would you do me the honor of introducing item K? I would like to introduce resolution number 2020-123, a resolution to support the naming of the Steels Corners Bridge over State Route 8 in Stowe, Ohio, in honor of civil rights leader, John Lewis. And I'd like to, do I have to move to suspend the rules? Or is this? You can ask the clerk to read it by its title. Okay, I'm so sorry. I think you took care of that for us. He yeah. did a great job. <laughs> hey, Mr. Mr. Heiler. Yes, sir. I, I would actually request, if you don't mind, to have the uh, legislation read in its entirety. Okay, I think that's a wonderful idea. Uh, would, I'd ask the clerk to read the legislation in its entirety, if you would, please. Okay. A resolution to support the naming of Steel's Corners Bridge over State Route 8 in Stowe, Ohio, in honor of civil rights leader John Lewis, whereas John Lewis was one of the top leaders of the civil rights movement to end legalization segregation in the United States, whereas John Lewis led the first march from Selma, Alabama to Montgomery, Alabama over the Edmund Pudis Bridge, whereas John Lewis became one of the original 13 Freedom Riders who rode the interstate buses to challenge the non-enforcement of the United States Supreme Court rulings regarding bus segregation, whereas John Lewis served as the chairman of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee and as such helped organize lunch counter set-ins and other demonstrations against segregation, whereas John Lewis served as a chairman of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, whereas John Lewis later became the director of the Voter Education Project and during his tenure helped to register millions of minority voters, whereas John Lewis started his political career when he served on the Atlanta City Council from 1981 to 1986, Whereas John Lewis served as U.S. Congressman from 1987 to 2020, and during his time in Congress, he continued to fight for freedom, equality, the basic human rights in the United States and worldwide. Whereas Stowe City Council passed Resolution 202084 for the promotion of racial equality within the city of Stowe, whereas the city of city, whereas Stowe City Council wants to create a teaching moment to continue his, the legacy of John Lewis and his fight for equality by naming Steele's Corner Bridge in his honor. Oh. I'm turning it back over to you, Mrs. Harrison, please. I would move to suspend the rules. Second. Second. 
It's been moved and seconded to suspend the rules. All those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 The rules have been suspended. Move to adopt. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt resolution 2020-123. Further discussion of this item. Madam President. Mr. Feldman. Just to thank you, I didn't get a committee of the whole to thank Mr. Heiler for uh, your work on this uh, outstanding. And um, we've shared it with the diversity committee here in the community and the schools has been meeting. So um, great job and um, we appreciate you uh, stepping forward. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Feldman. Further discussion? Mr. McIntyre. Yeah, I just wanted to, you know, reiterate, you know, for those who may be listening that didn't, uh, weren't able to uh, view the committee, the whole meeting, this letter, because there was some talks, you know, that this legislation is, is, is a resolution of support and naming uh, this current bridge in honor of uh, uh, John Lewis, that the city itself doesn't have the, the power to name that bridge, uh, but this is a support resolution that will go to, uh, you know, the legislative bodies or uh, agencies uh, beyond this uh, to uh, for their consideration but again I, I I'll echo what Mr. Uh, uh, Feldman said and I you know I said it in the uh, committee the whole meeting I thank Mr. Heiler you know for the passion and in, in, in the work that he put into this legislation I can see that it means uh, a lot to him and uh, I thank him for that so thank you thank, thank you, you Mr. McIntyre thank you thank you to the council thank you to the administration really thanks to all of you um, and uh, Let's just keep moving forward. Mayor Provanic. Thank you, Mr. Heiler. You have been more than persistent and persistency pays off, but not only because you were persistent, but is the right thing to do. I've heard many great comments uh, from all the council members this evening. Um, I, I couldn't be more proud to live in this city of Stowe uh, to, that we're doing something like this Again, uh, as Steve said, let's just begin this as a first part and let's let it keep carrying through our city. But thank you, Mr. Heiler. Really, really appreciate this. Thanks. Thank you. Further discussion? I know I stated this in the committee of the whole earlier, but like Mr. McIntyre said, in case somebody wasn't here for that, um, I think we'd be remiss in not recognizing the effort that Mr. Heiler put into this the groups he's reached out to to ensure that people support this. I mean, he's put in more effort than probably anybody here even really knows with the discussion and support he's got for this and the effort he's put into it. And it's a hard conversation to have and I appreciate you starting it and I hope we can just continue to roll with it. So I appreciate you opening that door and putting in this work, Mr. Heiler. This is on a professional, Cindy. Thank you for being my friend. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Heiler. Ms. Shaw? Nothing. I'm sorry. I thought you had your hand raised. No. Um, any further discussion tonight? Seeing none, I would ask the clerk to please call the roll. Tyler? Yes. McIntyre? Yes. Altieri? Altieri? Yes. Yes. Yoka? Yes. Everything's breaking yes. up. Yes. Feldman? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Uh, our resolution there, ordinance, or resolution 2020-123 has passed and will take effect according to its terms. I believe that is all our resolutions and ordinances for this evening. Ms. Villers, did I miss any that you had on your list? No, ma'am. We will move on to our next agenda item, disposition of our bills. I would entertain a motion to pay the bills. Second. It's Second. been moved and seconded to pay the bills. All those in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 No's, abstentions, the bills have been paid. Um, pending committee meeting items. Uh, planning committee, I believe the planning commission did meet so I believe we will need a planning committee meeting. Um, if Mr. Kurtz is still here, if you 
wants to chime in, but I believe we do still need a planning committee meeting for our next meeting, please. We maybe lost Mr. Kurtz, but please plan a planning committee, Ms. Fillers. Uh, Mr. Fioca, public improvements? Uh, yes, public improvements will uh, need to have a meeting next go round. Thank you. Uh, Mr. McIntyre for Roads and Safety and Finance? Yes, go ahead and uh, go ahead and schedule uh, roads, just schedule one for both. Uh, Committee of the Whole, I believe we probably will have a committee of the whole next meeting. We will leave it on the agenda because we do have the one item about regional dispatch that we have left out there on the agenda. Um, budget oversight, Mr. Heiler. Yes, please. So we will schedule those committee meetings for our next council meeting, which I don't have the date right in front of me, but I believe that is September 24th. Yes. Is there any other business to come before council this evening? Who's here, sir? Oh, sorry. Oh, Mr. Wren. I will need an executive session too. Thank you, Mr. Wren. Uh, any other items to come before council? Move to adjourn. Second. So moved and seconded to adjourn. Will the clerk please call the roll? Tyler? Yes. McIntyre? Yes. Altieri? Yes. Yoka? Yes. Feldman? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Uh, we stand adjourned. Thank you all this for attending this evening. <laughs>